been 36 years since the impossible dream when Brock, Yaz, Longborg, and Gibson played to seven games on Fenway's green. of success in St. Louis, a both offense and a defense that features four golden gloves. The cards are here, but they'll have to face a team that found some magic in Milwaukee. Live from Fenway Park, Nesson presents Boston Red Sox baseball. Tonight, the Red Sox take on the St. Louis Cardinals. Hi, everybody. I'm Don Orsillo, as always, joined by Jerry Remy. While well, the Red Sox are home, and they'll take on two pretty good teams. Uh, this should be a very good homestand. You know, you got St. Louis coming in here, very powerful club, great offensive club. And then, of course, Houston, the follow, has a great uh, pitching staff, and especially a bullpen. So competition level goes up a little bit for the Red Sox. This is not Pittsburgh and Milwaukee this week. These are two pretty good ball clubs. And tonight, Red Sox fans will see byun Yun Kim here at home. We'll have it for you next on Nesson. Sox Baseball in Nesson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, by your Boston area Lexus dealers, and by Citizens Bank. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Fenway Park. The Red Sox returning home after a very lengthy road trip. And interleague play continues here as the Red Sox will take on the St. Louis Cardinals for three, then the Houston Astros in over the weekend as the Red Sox come off a, a, a top trip for the Red Sox, but uh, winning two out of three against the Milwaukee Brewers. And welcome back, Jerry Remy. Jerry, hope you had a good weekend. Very nice weekend, Don. Thank you. The graduation went great, but it's nice to be back up here in the booth. Well, the Red Sox uh, with a good ending to that road trip and they're certainly glad to be home. Yeah, you uh, had some excitement in Milwaukee. They certainly scored a lot of runs, and, uh, of course, tonight we get a chance to see a very good National League team in St. Louis, and Red Sox fans get to see their first look here at Fenway of uh, Byun Young Kim, who will be making his second start of the season. So, hey, and what... The weather's nice, too. How about that? Outstanding. <laughs> this might be the best day and night that we have had all season long, and here we are on June the 10th. Now the Red Sox uh, about to take the field here, and they do. As they are led by Byun Yun Kim heading out to the mound as the Red Sox return here to Fenway Park. Let's take a look at the visiting St. Louis Cardinals starting nine tonight. Miguel Cairo will be at second base leading off. J.D. Drew in right field. Abro Albert Pujols, the D.H. will bat third. Jim Edmonds in center. Scott Rowland at third base. Edgar Renteria is at shortstop. Tino Martinez at first base. Mike Matheny does the catching. He bats eight. And Orlando Palmero bats ninth and plays in left field. The defense tonight for the Red Sox, they're eighth in the league. They've made 44 errors on the season. Bill Miller will be at third base. No more of the short stop Todd Walker at second and Kevin Millar at first left to right Manny Ramirez Johnny Damon and Trot Nixon Jason Veritek behind the plate and on the mound Young Young Kim it's been kind of strange since he's been here with the Red Sox a couple of relief outings but you see that one start a beautiful start against Pittsburgh went seven innings in that game allowed five hits only one earned run had one walk and a couple of strikeouts and anybody that watched that game saw that he works very very quickly he certainly keeps his fielders on his toes against St. Louis in his career a one and one record with one save that's in nine games and he did have a start against him earlier this year and he won that ball game the umpiring crew has Mike DeMuro in behind the plate calling the balls and strikes Andy Fletcher at first base Joe Brinkman at second and Daryl Cousins the umpire at third Let's take a look at tonight's game notes brought to you by a New England Toyota dealers. The first meeting between these two clubs since that 1967 World Series. Don, I have not been over that yet. The Cardinals hit his 618 hits. That's the most in the National League. And the Red Sox, 593 hits allowed, third most in the American League. We're available. Tonight's broadcast can be heard in Spanish by using the SAP function on your TV set. Buenas noches, amigos. Well, ready to work is Byun Yun Kim in his Fenway Park debut in a Red Sox uniform as he faces Miguel Cairo in the first pitch of the ball game in there for a strike. Cairo at 2.56, a home run and eight runs batted in. Well, one of the reasons Byun Yun Kim working tonight, Grady Little wanted him to have the opportunity to pitch at Fenway Park right out of the gate. And as his first 
three outings in a Red Sox uniform came from the road. He returns to a place that he enjoyed much success in interleague last year. He was able to save two ball games and work a third to finish it against the Red Sox as part of the Arizona Diamondbacks sweep here last year. And foul back in below us, two and two. Now those who have watched Kim pitch will see that he throws a couple of different kind of fastballs. One that will rise, that one will sink. And also uh, the slider and changeup. Then a look at Dave Wallace, the new pitching coach, the interim pitching coach for the Red Sox, as Tony Kloniger, of course, has taken the medical leave. Dave Wallace, a longtime baseball man, coming to the Red Sox from the Dodgers. And had previous pitching coach experience uh, not only with the Dodgers, but uh, with the New York Mets as well, and a long time in the minor leagues. Grady's saying before the ball game that he's had a relationship uh, with Dave Wallace for about 20 years. And he takes over today and was talking about the fact that he doesn't know a lot of the Red Sox pitchers, and it is going to take him some time to acquaint himself with them. Well, Yun Yun Kim starts his effort off with his first strikeout of the night. See, that's what he can do to you. He had that fastball that he threw to Cairo a couple of times that seemed to rise. Now, this one will sink down and in. So he's giving you a couple of different looks with that curveball right off, excuse me, the fastball right off the bat. So Miguel Cairo is gone. Here's J.D. Drew, right fielder. He's hitting it 343 coming into tonight's action. coming into tonight find themselves two games back of the Houston Astros and have the Chicago Cubs between them and the Astros They're two games out and what is kind of a tight top of the NL Central for Tony La Russa. a couple of teams kind of bunched in there at the top the Reds are five and a half games back and then you really drop off to Pittsburgh in Milwaukee where the Red Sox have already seen Chopped right side. Todd Walker on the move. Flips it kind of backhanded, but in time to get J.D. Drew two down. It's going to be interesting watching Kim go against this uh, powerful lineup of the Cardinals. They are among the league leaders in a number of offensive categories. They're the toughest team in the National League to strike out. And Tony La Russa remains as tense today as he did the first day he sat in the dugout with the Chicago White Sox. There's the White Sox, the Oakland A's, and now the Cardinals. He's racked up a long time here all of a sudden in St. Louis in his eighth season. This is 25th overall Major League season. Albert Pujols, who's in the top 10 in various categories, all offensive, and he is the league leader at 389. 16 home runs and 51 runs batted in. He gets a chance to do something that he doesn't get to do every day in the NL. That's DH tonight. Well, you know, Don, the question's often asked about who's the best right-handed hitter in the game. And, of course, we see Manny day in and day out. We've seen Edgar Martinez a lot. But uh, here's a guy of the National League, Pujols, uh, who, if not there, very close to being there. He is very much the real deal. Waves at that pitch, and it's one and two. He is first in slugging percentage at 720. Sits safely in 10 straight games, matching his best streak. Which he had done earlier in the season, ending it up on May 25th. He has 10 game winning RBIs this season to lead the National League. I think one of the most amazing numbers in the notes, he's the only player in Major League history to begin his career with back-to-back -back 300 seasons with batting average, 30 home runs, 100 runs, and at least 100 RBI. <laughs> That's not bad. <laughs> the 2-2 to Pujols. Doesn't chase frame by Veritek. But they had him, but it's now a full count. Mike DeMuro with the plate tonight. 
Didn't miss by much, but I believe it did miss away. Pujols, one of the toughest guys in the National League to strike out, only 19 on the season. In the air to left center field. It'll fall in there for a base hit. Johnny Damon over to play it. Pujols thought about it, too. Now he's going to have trouble getting back if they can throw him out. But they can as he is able to get back. A little overzealous. You get all the way around, almost halfway to second base. And surprised to find that out was Walker. Of course, he's got his back to the play as well. Yeah, you watch Johnny Damon, too, in the outfield. He had trouble finding this ball for some reason. That sun must be setting somewhere around uh, that center field area because he, for a while, had his hand up blocking the sun. That's why he stayed back on the ball, and that's why Pujols was thinking about two bases. So he stands at first base with a single. And the first hit of the night for the Cardinals. Here is Jim Edmonds, who is always on highlight films with some amazing catches during the course of his career. Whether it be you, the Anaheim Angels are here with the Cardinals. He's had a terrific season at 300. He also has 15 home runs and knocked in 37 runs. Quickly in the hole, nothing in two. Edmonds did not like that call from DeMuro, thought that ball was down and maybe in. At Fenway Park, he's a lifetime 342 hitter, and of course that coming with his days with the Angels. And he's always enjoyed hitting here at Fenway. month of the year in April he was leading the National League with a 389 batting average and coming into tonight's action hitting at 300 to right field Nixon moving in diving to make the catch sinking fast and Nixon robs Edmonds of a hit the first inning. The Red Sox come into the plate. Johnny Damon to lead it off. Todd Walker at second base. Nomar at shortstop. Ramirez in left. David Ortiz the DH. Millar at first. Miller at third. Nixon in right. Veritek does the catching. Woody Williams on the mound and works a strike to Johnny Damon. Woody Williams, 8-1 and one on the season. Looking tonight to become the first nine-game winner in the National League. The 1.99 ERA is the best in baseball. Foul pop for Mike Matheny, who makes the catch in front of the wall despite some fans reaching over. He gets the job done. Well, this is an excellent defense here for the St. Louis Cardinals. They're third in the league. They've only made 29 errors on the season. They got gold glovers all over the place. Scott Rowland, gold glove winner at third base. Edgar Renteria, gold glove winner at shortstop. Miguel Cairo at second. And Tino Martinez at first. Orlando Palmaro in left. Gold glove winner Jim Edwins in Edmonds, I should say, in center field. J.D. Drew and a recent gold glove winner a couple of years ago, Mike Matheny behind the plate. So uh, they can throw some leather at you. Todd Walker about to stand in with one down here in the inning. Woody Williams off the mound briefly. Walker hitting at 315. And out after the first pitch sends it fouled off the left side. So Red Sox hitters not wasting any time here in the early going. I got a couple of ideas. The first one. I'm just thinking, when we get the defense on the graphic, maybe we could put Gold Glove winners' names in gold. <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> to signify that they've won a Gold Glove yeah. in the past. In their first strike, and it's 0-2. This team does have some great players defensively. One of the game's best shortstops, and Edgar Enteria, the catcher there, Mike Matheny. And as I mentioned, Jim Edmonds in center field, who is... On a highlight reel just about every night out there in center field. And they are as strong as you get right up the middle. And they have another gold glove winner on the disabled list, their second baseman. Mandovania, right? That's correct. <laughs> That's some strength up the middle. Well, one, two. That'll get away. And evens up here at two and two to Todd Walker. It's been a long time since we've seen Woody Williams. He was, of course, with the Toronto. 
early in his career went to San Diego and now obviously with St. Louis he's familiar with pitching here at Fenway from his days in Toronto a much different looking Woody Williams though I think you would agree yeah I would I would have to agree with that Don his numbers he's got this year just incredible the last few years with the Cardinals 2001 he was seven and one as this one will miss for ball four. Red Sox have their first base runner of the night. And that's something that doesn't happen very often. A walk. That's only the 16th guy that he's walked now in 86 in the third innings. So one away. Walker at first, and here's Nomar. 315, 10 homers, and 41 runs driven in for Garcia Parra. Hit safely in 34 of his last 36 games since April the 27th. And during the last 36 games, Nomar has been hitting at a 359 clip. Currently leading all of the major leagues with 28 multi hit games on the season. Evens up at 1 and 1 to Nomar. Williams came to St. Louis via San Diego, traded from the Padres in exchange for Ray Lankford, August 2nd of 2001. Omar sends it down the line in right field. J.D. Drew heading over towards the pole to make the catch in front of the wall in the short fencing. He had to go a very long distance to get there, and he makes the running catch for out number two. Now, that's a nice play by a guy that is not very familiar at all with Fenway Park, and we all know how difficult this can be going toward that line. There's just no foul territory, just the fence. And J.D. Drew makes a terrific play. He looks over, takes a peek, knows he's got some room, and makes the catch. Two down here is Manny. At 3.20, 12 homers and 45 runs batted in. An eight-game hitting streak going, and he hits it high and deep to left. Palmiro back front of the wall, and it's up off the top of the wall. Walker is headed homeward. He will score on the wall, scraping RBI double for Manny. certainly did not get all of this. It sounded and looked like it was toward the end of the bat. It might have been a cut fastball right there from uh, from Woody, and it's going to just scrape that wall on the way down. I thought for a second, Don, that the fans were going to reach over and interfere with that, but they did not. And, of course, with two outs, Walker on the move from first base scores easily. So two down, Manny stands at second base, the first hit of the night for the Red Sox. And the result, the first run of the night. Here is David Ortiz, who's worked his average all the way back to 293 after a slow beginning. And having more of a chance to play lately at first base for the Red Sox tonight is the DH. Last played on Saturday in Milwaukee, and David was three for five with a home run. Yeah, he's really worked at uh, raising that batting average. He has hit at 360 in his last 22 games to raise his average to a season high 293, and that was up from 188 at the time. And he's ahead now, two and one. You know, for a while, Grady was having a tough time figuring out whether it was going to be Ortiz in the lineup. Millar, Millet, Millar made it almost impossible for him not to get in the lineup. Tonight, they're both in there. Then I'm sure Grady's glad to have the DH back here again as well in this series at Fenway Park. I was talking about it over the weekend. A little added stress you worry about to the pitcher's health in some instances. And certainly we saw Tim Wakefield get injured. This is down the line and left and a fair ball. Manny will scamper home. David Ortiz headed for two. He's there standing. And the Red Sox lead it two to nothing. What a beautiful.
beautiful job by Ortiz to stay back on this breaking ball. It's a curveball from Woody Williams, and he does a nice job. The hands stay back, and then he'll just slap that ball to the opposite field for the base hit. So the Red Sox with two outs, back-to-back -back doubles, and very quickly have a two-run lead against a guy that's been almost impossible to score on this year. Woody Williams, who comes into tonight's action with an earned run average under two. This is Kevin Millar. A 1.99 ERA to lead the NL, but a record of 8-1. and one. And he is fresh off what might be his best outing of the year, a 13-5 victory against Toronto. And you remember how good Toronto is offensively. Over eight innings, he gave up one hit and no runs as part of that 13-5 victory. Kevin Millar, 308, 10 homers and 41 runs driven in. And on the road trip, five home runs for Millar in nine games. An incredible weekend for Millar as he grounds it to Renteria at short. And that'll do it. But the Red Sox get two, and at the end of one, it's 2 nothing Boston. Don Orsillo and Jerry Remy back at Fenway Park. Red Sox on top. Two to nothing at the end of one. And here is Scott Rowland. Rowland at 297 so far in the season with the Cardinals. The former Philadelphia Philly third baseman. understood uh, why it was that the Phillies were in kind of a hurry to get rid of Scott Rowland. Of course, he did not get along with Larry Boa. I think maybe it was Scott Rowland that was anxious to get away from the <laughs> Phillies. <laughs> and Larry Boa. <laughs> they did not appear to get along very well, and there were times in the media when the two went back and forth kind of sparring at each other. Rowland, a former Rookie of the Year. Kim missing up top. Three and one now to Scott Rowland. Coming off the best day he's had as a member of the Cardinals on Sunday against Baltimore. Four for five in that game with a grand slam. Chops it foul. And it's a full count now to Scott Rowland. It'll be followed by Edgar Renteria. And Tino Martinez here in the second inning. field and stared by Millar. Went the other way with it. Millar, the lunging play to his right, proud number one. Now we've seen a couple of great defensive plays already by the Red Sox. The one that Nixon made to end the first inning, and now Millar takes a base hit away from Scott Rowland. Playing well off that line. One crossover step and uh, takes the base hit away. One down for Edgar Enteria, the shortstop. And the guy who's had a terrific season, his 330 batting average comes in, has him sixth in the National League. And he's first in the NL in multi hit games with 27. He's had one fewer than Omar Garcia Parra for the uh, major league lead in that category. the team and two out RBIs as well. He's got 25 of them. He fouls it off at the plate. One and two now to Renteria. He's another guy that's very difficult to strike out. He's only struck out 15 times. Been a little more patient over the last couple of seasons uh, than earlier in his major league career. First time he got to the big leagues, it was with the Marlins in 1996, a former Florida Marlins draft pick. As it evens up at two and two, actually played in New England in 1995, was a member of the Portland Sea Dogs, coming up through the Marlins chain, the double A level. Struck him out. Second. 
second strikeout for Byung Yun Kim, two down. Kim this time goes to that Frisbee slider. Just continues to go up and away from the right-handed hitter. And again, that, uh, that one of the toughest guys in the National League to strike out. That's only the 16th time he's going down. Here comes a guy who's used to playing at Fenway Park, Tino Martinez. Chops the first pitch down the first baseline. Millar opts to take it alone, and that'll do it. One, two, three inning for Byun Yun Kim. Red Sox on top, two nothing. Back at Fenway, ready for the bottom of the second inning, and it's the bottom third of the Boston order to face Woody Williams. Bill Miller, Trot Nixon, and Jason Veritek here in the last of the second inning. Bill Miller, 355, heading into tonight's action. He has slipped in behind Melvin Mora of the Baltimore Orioles. There are names you expect to be at the top of the list. Melvin Mora is not one of them. But he is leading the American League right now. As he checks in at 365, Hank Blaylock, who's been among the leaders all season long, is third at 353, the Texas Rangers' third baseman. In the dirt, it evens up at 2-2 two two to Bill Miller. Quite a few names in the top 10 down the American League. You wouldn't expect to be there at this time of the season. No, it's true. I mean, who would think that Melvin Morrow would be leading the league in hitting? Uh, how about Eric Burns of the Oakland A's? He is in the top 10. He had that long hitting streak. Yeah, he, he can really run. Remember him yeah. from a year ago? <laughs> wow. The fly. Certainly each row you would expect. Edgar. Delgado. Blaylock wasn't expected, obviously, to maybe even make the club. And how about Rocco Baldelli? Yeah. Continues to have a terrific year. He's one of the favorites, obviously, for Rookie of the Year. Another guy right in the middle of that pile, Frank Catalanato, has made himself into a very yeah, good hitter. He's a good hitter. Grounded to the left of Roland, who scoops it up and throws out Bill Miller for the first out. Red Sox baseball in Nesson is brought to you by Bob Stores, by Coors Light, and by Volvo. One away, and it brings up Trot Nixon. Well, Nixon with a dramatic home run on Saturday to tie the game at 10 aside in the ninth inning. Was Jason Veritek followed with a tie-breaking long ball. So the Red Sox rallied from a 10-4 ball game to win it in a dramatic fashion in this part of the big comeback on Saturday. And Nixon's home run tied the game. Did see his nine-game hitting streak snapped on Sunday at Milwaukee as he was 14 for 32 during the nine-game hitting streak. Well, the last two times these teams played at Fenway, it was Bob Gibson on three days rest against Jim Lomborg on two days rest. And, of course, the Cardinals winning game seven of that World Series. That's amazing that he came back on two days rest. I realize it was less amazing in those days, but... Line down the right field line and foul. Oh, that got down there in a hurry. 1967, the impossible dream team. Stremsky, Reggie Smith, Tony C, Rico, Joe Foy, Mike Andrews, George Scott, Russ Gibson. Is that the team that you really remember? First? Yeah, that's that's the one that uh, my all-time favorite. Nixon didn't offer the ball in the dirt. He was able to hold up. You no, know, prior to that, Don, the Red Sox were horrible. I mean, they were really bad. And, uh, all of a sudden, Dick Williams gets the job. He comes in. He says, we'll win more than we lose. He brings a bunch of guys from Pawtucket with him. Yastrzemski has a triple crown season. It was just a remarkable year. Nixon sends it through the left side. 
A one-out single for Trot Nixon. H.P. Hood is rooting for the Red Sox and kids throughout New England. Each time the Red Sox strike out an opponent, make a double play, hit a home run at Fenway, Hood donates $100 to the Hood Home Team Advantage Fund, which in turn benefits children hospitals all over New England. One out, one on. Jason Veritek batting ninth for Boston tonight. I didn't realize it's a Bob Gibson homer in game seven. I think he had three home runs, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> I might be wrong. <laughs> homer in game seven, and he posted three complete game wins as part of that series. He wasn't a bad pitcher, you know. No. <laughs> I heard he was pretty good. I heard he was mean, too. Yes. <laughs> 251 career wins for Bob Gibson. And yeah, you're right, Don. You did not dig in against Bob Gibson. Because if you did, you'd be dusting the dirt off the back of your pants. Snap throw to first, and Nixon's able to get back at first. Tommy Harper had a funny story about Bob Gibson. I guess I don't know, just Tommy himself or somebody else who was a rookie. And uh, started to dig in at home plate in the spring training game, and I guess Gibson walked up halfway between the mound and home plate and said, look, you finish digging in. He says, now dig a nice big hole. He says, because I'm going to bury you in that hole right now. <laughs> wow. That is, wow. You know, you often see players fraternize before the ball game on the field here. And as Veritek sends a foul off the left side. And you see players, you know, talking before games. I guess you wouldn't do that if Bob Gibson was no, a teammate I, of yours. No, I don't think Bob would have much to say to you. I mean, there's an intimidation factor, and uh, pitchers like to keep that. And I was wrong. There was only one home run in that series. He was one for 11, and that one hit was a home run. Well, nevertheless, a very impressive World Series. Three complete game wins for him. Carl Yastrzemski was the offensive hero as he hit 400 in the series. Three homers, five RBIs in the seven games. Veritek lines it into left center. Up to second base goes Nixon, and the Red Sox with back-to-back -back hits here. Well, game time is Miller time at Fenway and on Nesson. Stop by a participating Fenway area retailer before the game. You can win free tickets to the game and end up on Nesson. And game time is Miller time, Fenway seats. They're all standing up out there like they knew we were reading that promo. <laughs> on cue. So one away, two on here as the Red Sox continue to get to Woody Williams. And it's back up to the top of the order for Johnny Damon, who fouled out to the catcher his first time up. Damon's really struggling over the last 14 games, hitting at 2.03. And return to the leadoff spot on Saturday in Milwaukee. He's been the first time since May the 30th when he's dropped to lower in the order. Well, the other time these two teams met it was 1946 in the World Series. The Cardinals overcame a 3-2 game deficit, winning the final two games at Sportsman's Park. This one gets away from Matheny briefly. No advance for either runner. In that uh, decisive seventh game, the Sox scored twice in the top of the eighth inning and a Dom DiMaggio double to tie the game 3-3 before the Cardinals played it a run on Harry Walker's RBI double in the bottom of the inning for a 4-3 win in World Series victory. That was the mad dash around the bases by Ina Slaughter, right? Mm -hmm. The 2-1 was fouled off. Ted Williams hit 200 with one RBI in the only postseason appearance of his career. Two on the ground and outside a first foul. Yeah, the team's been away for a couple of weeks, so the girls 
They haven't had a lot of practice. That was a little easier to handle than the last one that got down there in a hurry. Uh, they'll get better as the homestand goes on. There's no question about that. Lefty down there on that side, on third base side. Off the pitcher's glove to short. Red to Rio, barehanded to second to get the out. Wow. <laughs> That's a gold glove shortstop doing his business there. We're out number two. Now, first of all, his timing is kind of messed up because the ball deflects off Williams's glove. He has to change direction, plays it barehanded, and whoops, behind the back or whatever that is, around the kitchen. <laughs> Not exactly behind the back, around the stomach. And they get the force out at second base. That, uh, that's like a little bit like a uh, Vizcal, isn't it? It is. Something you American League fans are accustomed to seeing from Omar Vizcal. So runners at the corners, two down, and here is Todd Walker. He walked his first time up, the only walk given up by Woody Williams. And he's had to throw a lot of pitches here so far, as he's now thrown 43 pitches in his outing through an inning and two-thirds. So the Red Sox are making Woody Williams work here tonight. You looked at the numbers of this pitcher coming in, and you figured it might be a long night. But, uh, he has not had the kind of night that he's enjoyed this season. Coming in with an 8 and 1 record of 1.99 ERA into his 13th start of the year. And his only loss coming two starts ago against Pittsburgh. And in that game, only gave up two earned runs. On the ground towards Cairo. He will throw out Todd Walker to end the inning. We play two from Fenway, 2 nothing Boston. It's television's longest-running reality romance competition. And this season, we're covering over 120 days. True love makes great TV. Red Sox baseball on Nessie. Get real. Go Sox. It's America's favorite talent showcase. Young hopefuls compete to become the next superstars in their field. It's reality TV, and there's nothing idle about it. Red Sox baseball on Nesson. Get real. Go Sox. Top of the third inning back at Fenway. Red Sox on top, two to nothing, out hitting the Cardinals four to one. Mike Matheny, Orlando Palmero, and Miguel Cairo anticipated in the inning. Yeah. Yun Kim, two pretty good innings to, to start his effort tonight. Just giving up one hit to Albert Pujols in the first inning, and that has been it. He enjoyed a 1-2-3 second inning. And has two strikeouts through the first two innings. The end of his delivery is always kind of a surprise. It looks like it's always sort of different at the end. It, almost like uh, sometimes he is more animated than others. Other times it almost looks like he slips. <laughs> but it is uh, an interesting delivery nevertheless. And as this one is sent foul outside a third. Yeah, sometime, Don, it looks like he's trying to get so much into the pitch he can't stop through that delivery. He just keeps going. <laughs> Kim's only about, what, 5'7", not very big at all. That time he was in pretty good yeah. position, though, on the foul ball. It's really the pitch before that that uh, he was dancing all over the place at the end. Tough to keep his jersey tucked in. We saw that in Pittsburgh with all that moving and motion that he has. And away. Mike Matheny. His batting average has climbed recently. He's got up to 279. Coming off a homestand in which he hit 343. The Cardinals, after this three game series with the Red Sox, will take off for New York. They'll switch places with the Houston Astros or at Yankee Stadium, and then they'll all come here as Jimmy Williams and the Astros will be here over the weekend up right side Walker heading to the outfield grass to bring in out number one well join the Red Sox wives for a picnic in the park Sunday night 
June 29th. Enjoy a picnic on Fenway Prox Field, a sports memorabilia auction and entertainment. Proceeds benefit the Red Sox Foundation and the American Diabetes Association. For more information, log on to diabetes.org. Call 1-88-DIABETES or email your name, address, and phone number to Red Sox Wives at diabetes.org. Here is Orlando Palmero, the former Anaheim Angel. Palmero, the number nine hitter for the St. Louis Cardinals. He's been doing some pinch hitting for them. He has a team high six pinch hits on this season. So far this season, the Cardinals 5-1 and one in interleague play so far against the American League. Well, the Cardinals got a couple of players off the DL today. Jason Endringhausen, the closer of a year ago, mm -hmm. off the DL. And Joe Girardi, the backup catcher, coming off the DL. They're making their first appearances of the season for each. They're both placed on the DL in spring training. Isringhausen had off-season shoulder surgery, and Girardi suffered a herniated disc in his neck. Which, if you're a catcher, that is a, that's a tough one to come back from. And it has taken him a long time. Also, Isringhausen, who had off-season shoulder surgery. He's had uh, every kind of surgery between his time with the Mets. Both elbow and shoulder. Yeah, that herniated disc, I mean, that, that sends pain all the way down to your legs. towards left. Nomar makes the catch. Well, I'll tell you, right now, the Red Sox look like the gold glove team out there. They've made some terrific plays. Nixon first, Millar, and now Garcia Parra reaching over his shoulder to catch that uh, bloop by Palmero. Looks like a day off has done uh, the boys some good. Fresh legs. Six in a row retired by Byung-Yun Kim. Miguel Cairo struck out his first time up. Well, the Red Sox are going to need that day off because tonight begins a stretch in which they'll play 20 straight days before the next off day, which will be on June 30th. So a long stretch of games for the Red Sox. On the ground towards Todd Walker at second base. On to Millar, and that'll do it. Another one, two, three inning for Byun Yun Kim. Don Orsillo and Jerry Remy back at Fenway Park. Our producer is Patrick Cavanaugh, director Mike Naracci, associate producer Greg Petranzio, and our stat man is Paul Carroll. Glad you've joined us tonight. The Red Sox returning home. Interleague play continuing tonight. Red Sox and Cardinals. Omar fly to right. His first time up. Red Sox scoring twice in the first inning. Getting it done with two down. In the first as Omar sends it down the right field line. J.D. Drew moving over and he can't make the catch. It's a fair ball. He'll tumble into the stands, and that is a ground rule as that jumps up into the seats. Nomar given second base and a leadoff double to begin things here in the bottom of the third. Well, he sent uh, J.D. Drew in the same direction he did back in the first inning, but this time Drew can't catch up to the ball and then finds himself in the first row. Of some pretty good seats down that line. in just inside the line. So a double in the 17th of the year for Nomar Garcia Parra. League leader is Vernon Wells with 23s tied with Frank Catalanato, both of the Toronto Blue Jays in doubles. 
Red Sox are there. Third double of the game, and here's Manny who has one. He doubled off the wall in left to score Boston's first run. He's had a tough go of it against Woody Williams in his career. You're not used to seeing those numbers for Manny against anybody. Inside a third and foul. And he'll hit sharply down in that direction. Looked like a skate save she made on yeah. that, huh? Like my tambour on Dura. Did you watch that last night? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I did. When one, one nothing, it was over, right? Yeah, pretty much. You don't score on them after they get the lead. No. And when it was two nothing, it was definitely over at that point. Yeah. People would argue, but uh, I find New Jersey Devil hockey very boring. Yes, but it does win Stanley yeah. Cups. There's no doubt about that. I'm very happy for Pat Burns because I think he's a terrific coach and guy who now lives in New Hampshire. So I'm happy for him. But it, the whole trap thing to me is very boring. But effective. Big swing from Manny. Evens up at two and two. A change up that time from Woodward. Woodward. Why do I want to call him Woody Woodward? Because there is a Woody Woodward. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, it's Woody Williams. <laughs> two, two. Elmas low and away, and it's now full count to Ramirez. First base is open. And waiting on deck is David Ortiz. Sox winning four of their last six. They finished five and seven on the 12 game road trip. Manny jolts it to center. Jim Edmonds in his tracks there to make the catch. Biddle to cap high. Red Sox baseball on Nesson is brought to you by your Lincoln Mercury dealers and by Lojack. That was struck pretty well, but uh, right in the neighborhood of Jim Edmonds in center. After a couple of off-speed pitches, change up and curveball, uh, Williams goes back to the fastball, and Manny right on it, but right at Jim Edmonds. So one down, and here's David Ortiz, who doubled and drove in a run in the first inning. And the Red Sox finishing up their 14-day, 12-game trip, going 5-7 and seven on the road trip. 1-2 and two in New York, 0-3 in Toronto, 2-1 and one in Pittsburgh, and 2-1 and one in Milwaukee. On the top that time, Ortiz couldn't make contact. 1-1. One and one. Sox coming into tonight's action, leading the American League and hitting at 295. And averaging 6.2 runs per game. You wouldn't lose many games if uh, your pitching was above average with that many runs scored per game. The Red Sox come in second to last in pitching. With a 5.26 earned run average, only Texas has a higher ERA. One hopper sharply hit to Tino Martinez. He'll win the foot race, but on to third goes Garcia Parra. Now support the boys and girls clubs of Boston with Keyspan, where kids go to be inspired and challenged. Keyspan, the energy to think ahead. stands at third and a two out RBI situation for Kevin Millar grounded out to shortstop his first time up it's a great production over the last 11 games as he has started to heat it up again with a pretty incredible weekend series lifts it in the air to short left field Orlando Palmiro moving in and takes care of the third out of the inning. We played three, two nothing, Boston.
Sox baseball I'm missing is brought to you by Dunkin Donuts by Jeep and by Samuel Adams Boston Lager. That's on to the top of the fourth inning on a lovely night from Fenway Park after we've had some pretty terrible weather <laughs> here in New England to begin the season and everywhere else for that matter. But here tonight, just a terrific night at the ballpark after a great day in the Boston area. Their league play continuing and we're into the fourth with the Red Sox on top of the Cardinals two to nothing. J.D. Drew to lead it off. He's riding the seven-gamer. He grounded out to second base his first time up. Well, I got a chance, Don. I want to send best wishes along to Tyler Fisher, who is uh, right now being treated at Mass Eye and Ear here in Boston. And hopefully uh, watching this game will pick up your spirits. Get well soon. I certainly hope so. to J.D. Drew. It's one and two. Yun Yun Kim has looked very good. Through the first three innings, he's allowed only one base runner, Albert Pujols, with a single. And that has been it. Makes his second start. We've seen him in two relief appearances. At least foul back into the seats. Yun Yun Kim was Roughed up over the weekend in Milwaukee. As in two innings, he gave up five hits and four runs. It was another one of those side day type sessions where they opt to use him during the game. And it did not go very well for him as it's grounded outside a third and foul. And it's funny, in the two games that he's been used in relief, he went one inning against Toronto, gave up three hits and two runs. Then in relief against Milwaukee in two innings, he gave up five hits and four runs. But in the starts, he's been outstanding. He told you he wanted to be a starter. <laughs> you <laughs> got to take him for his word, right? I guess so. It would lead you to believe that this is exactly what he should be doing, and we should forget about using him out of the bullpen. See, that's a pitch that lefties are vulnerable against against a guy like that with that kind of delivery because you think middle away against a guy like this with that ball darting down and away from a left hand. And when he comes inside, that has a tendency to freeze left-handed hitters. On the ground, backhanded by Walker. Throws out J.D. Drew for the first out of the inning. It's time now for our Aflac trivia question. Who holds the National League record for lowest ERA in a season? We'll have the answer for you in the next half inning. Did you catch that moving camera on the roof out there, right? That was exciting. I missed it. Wow. Albert Pujols, the only base runner for the Cardinals tonight. He's got an 11-game hitting streak. As a result of his base hit in the first inning to keep it going. In the air to right field. Nixon has it lined up. And there's two down. Let's check in with Tom Karen. Tom? Don, thanks very much. Ken Casey here from the Dropkick Murphys. Guitarist with the band that's gone big time. New CD today. Blackout. Things are going pretty well. Going good, yeah. Had a Red Sox game tonight. Couldn't get any better. Now you're a big uh, Bruins fan. Seen your Bruins games, Red Sox games. You're a big sports fan here in Boston. Yeah, I get, I get to as many as I can when I'm home. Uh, you know, it's... Uh, Big Bruins fan, and I get also get to a lot of Red Sox. Yeah. New CD out today. You guys hit the road for a tour tomorrow. Uh, how long is the tour this time around? Uh, somewhere around three months. The first leg is 64 show, uh, 60 shows in 64 days. So. 60 shows in 64 days. So guys, next time we're on the road, you got to remember that one. 60 shows, 64 days for the Dropkick Murphys. Yeah. No five-star hotels like <laughs> Remy stays in, you know. Yeah, not the Remy Hotel. <laughs> guys, back to you. All right, Tom. Thanks very much. Wonder what he does on his days off. <laughs> he doesn't have any. That's part of the problem. <laughs> Jim Edmonds sending it down the left field line with power. And that'll go up off the wall. Edmonds scampering for two. Man, he throwing to second and in. Standing at second is Edmonds. 
Walker off the bag a little bit with the throw. And Edmonds with a double with two down. You know, if you watch Edmonds, uh, no stride. Watch that foot just come up and go back down. Very similar to Garcia Parra, Paul Molitor. Todd Walker has that similar type uh, swing where they don't stride. Scrapes the wall on the way down. Wasn't really running that hard into second base, and it made it look a lot closer than what it actually was going to be. How do you get any kind of momentum going without a stride? Well, you know, it's a weight shift. They, 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 they shift their weight back on that back leg. And without a stride, you, your eyes aren't moving very much. You know, you get a real good look at the baseball. I think if I had to do it all over again, I'd try that. Really? Yeah. Because <laughs> I was a mess, like always <laughs> over striding. Brutal. <laughs> was your head all over the place? Ah, bouncing up and down, swinging the pitches over my head. Terrible. Scott Rowland lined out to first base his first time up. I wonder, now that you've been sitting in this chair for so long, how many things you would do differently if you could start your career again watching from this vantage point? Anything different? Yeah, I'd probably try to be about 6'4 and weigh about 280 and have a lot of power. <laughs> so you definitely go the steroid route then. And I'd cock my bat too. How's that? <laughs> been teetering around the 300 mark at 297 taking all the way and taking a strike three and one well, Edmund standing at second base marks the first time tonight the Cardinals have had a runner each second this next pitch will be the 60th of the night for Kim and it's lined to third Bill Miller snow cone but he holds on to it to conclude the inning three and a half done two nothing Boston back at Fenway Bill Miller to lead it off as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning Red Sox on top two to nothing Miller Nixon and Baratak to face Woody Williams and it's towards Edgar Renteria sure handed shortstop throws out Bill Miller for out number one Well, Manny Ramirez with an RBI double and a run scored in the first inning. David Ortiz with an RBI double. Todd Walker with a walk and a run scored. Yan Yan Kim, four shutout innings, giving up just two hits. And Woody Williams, three and a third, giving up two runs. He's thrown 61 pitches in his outing tonight. And here is Trot Nixon with one down. Trot single to left field his first time up. Some impressive numbers for Trot Nixon over the last 10 games. We just got our new Red Sox programs, uh, the third edition. It's like a nice thing in there for the Rem Dog. Question and answer, and it uh, looks like you spent a day with some of the Jimmy Fund. Yeah, teams. some of the uh, patients from the Jimmy Fund uh, were over the ballpark on the last, I think it was the last homestand, and uh, we had a nice little chat down in one of the uh, luxury boxes and they had a list of questions that they wanted answered so we did it I had no idea that it was going to be in the program what did they ask you about all baseball stuff or uh, it, uh, a lot of baseball stuff something about this guy here that sits in front of us all yeah. kind of good <laughs> questions they really did they were it was a fun day and hopefully it takes them away from uh, some of their pain for a little while Nixon sends it to left. Orlando Palmero leaps to make the catch. A well, guy doesn't spend a lot of time in left field here at Fenway Park dealing with that wall out there. He had more room than I think he realized. But he leaps to make the catch for round number two. He had some experience of Palmero when he was a member of the uh, the Angels. But uh, you're right, Don. A little. Uh, he had about four or five more steps before he got back to that wall. But you know. It's funny how outfielders, they get a feeling for a warning track. And that warning track in front of left field is bigger than most around the league. So they get about five or six steps on it. They think, well, I better jump now. But they still have a little bit more room to go. But it's a little, uh, little bigger than most around baseball. Jason Veritek singled his first time.
There are a couple minor league spots that don't even. I'm trying to remember which one it is. There's one in AAA that does not have dirt for a track. It has a line. It's on AstroTurf, and I've often wondered what good is that. Yeah, that doesn't help very much, does it? <laughs> the outfielder isn't going to look down to find out where the line is to find out where he is. I don't remember that. Fly ball to left. Let me check the line <laughs> and see how far. <laughs> hey. There's no dirt. I'm trying to remember where it is. Uh, it escapes me now, but it, it doesn't work. 2-2, two -two slap foul off the left side. Fighting off another, still two and two. Now, did you take Wally to the graduation with you, or did uh, Wally stay at home and watch the games while you were busy? And actually, you didn't know this, but he was in Milwaukee. Oh, was he? You know, I thought I saw him from afar. Yeah. In the air to right center field, Jim Edmonds will move over and take care of out number three. We played four from Fenway, two nothing Boston. Don Orsillo and Jerry Remy back at Fenway ready for the top of the fifth inning. Yun Yun Kim has a 2-0 lead as he's thrown four shutout innings to begin his debut as a starter with the Red Sox here tonight at Fenway Park. Garanteria sends it foul off the right side. Four for six against Yun Yun Kim. And Kim pitching with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Well, he has worked on this mound before, as we mentioned. Two saves here against the Red Sox last season with Arizona. Actually appeared in all three games as part of the Arizona Diamondbacks sweep. This is lined, a fair ball down the right field line. Nixon, as it rolls around down there in the corner, goes to dig it out, but not before Edgar Renteria stands at second base with a leadoff double. Red Sox baseball on Nesson is brought to you by your New England Toyota dealers and by Citizens Bank. So a double for Edgar Renteria, the second double of the night for the Cardinals. Jim Edmonds had one an inning ago. That was a classic example, too, of a guy hitting inside the baseball, getting the hands inside the ball and shooting it the other way. You know, Martinez grounded out to first base on the first pitch he saw last time up. A little bit more patient this time. Takes the strike. You know, Martinez now 10 grand slams in his career. Two of them have come against the Red Sox. Is he one of the guys that got came in the World Series? You know, I don't remember. Paul Carroll probably get on yeah. that. Ah, I'm wrong. Jeter and Brocious. Okay. You know, Veritek's going to go out and talk to Byun Yun Kim. I understand that Byun Yun Kim understands English very, very well, even though he's not all that comfortable in speaking it. Uses the translator Chang Lee as we've seen in many interviews, but apparently he's pretty good at English. But like some a little bit unwilling to do it kind of in the interview style. As this is set to center field. Damon ranging back. This will take him to the track. Front of the wall. Makes the catch. Little bobble there at the end and tagging from second inning to third is Renteria. He would have anyway with a deep fly ball to center field. And there's one down. Well, time now for the answer to our Affleck trivia question tonight. Who holds a National League record for lowest ERA in a season? Bob Gibson, 1.12 in 1968. <laughs> wow. Plus that year they faced the Detroit Tigers in the World Series. In 305 innings pitched, 38 earned runs. 268 strikeouts, 62 walks. He had a 22 and 9 record in 1968. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I think either after that year or very shortly after that's when they lowered the mound again. 
Correct. That must have made a pretty big difference. Now it is 10 inches above home plate. What was it then? 15 maybe? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that is a towering situation. The 1 0 to Mike Matheny, who popped to second base his first time. Well, you were having guys back then struggling to hit 300 to lead yeah. the league. Gaz was in a uh, batting race with Alex Johnson, I recall, of Anaheim. And uh, Yaz won the batting race at 301. Pretty little optimistic that Pedro Martinez will make a start here tomorrow night at Fenway Park in game two of the series. And on the hands, popped up into shallow right. Walker out, Nixon in. Trot calling him off to make the catch. And certainly in short enough right field that Renteria could not try it. And there's two down. Now well, big outs in a game. That's certainly a big out for Kim. The man at third base, one out, and gets that little pop-up that uh, Nixon can make the play on, and no chance at all to get that run home from third base. Matter of fact, uh, Renteria was not even tagging up. So can he follow up that big out with another clutch out to get the three outs in the inning? Two down, and here's Orlando Palmero lined out to shortstop his first time up. We mentioned that Pedro Martinez scheduled to go here tomorrow night. He'll be opposed by right-hander Brett Tomko. And it is likely in the same move that will activate Pedro Martinez. The Red Sox will likely DL Casey Fossum tomorrow. And uh, apparently he has tendonitis is the word. And really what he's going to need is rest. So the Red Sox will likely place him on the DL tomorrow night to make the move to reactivate Pedro Martinez. And you could tell looking at Casey's eyes over the weekend that he was certainly fearful of what it could be because he's never had an arm problem. And here for the first time having shoulder problems. 0-2 oh, to Palmero. There again, that rising fastball from uh, Young Young Kim actually ended up out of the strike zone above the lettuce. Runner at third, two down. Kim's 0-2 oh, pitch. This is down and away. So on 72 pitches, 46 of them for strikes. We're trying to get out of a little jam here in the top of the fifth inning. In the air, down the line and right, but foul. And the distance, but uh, wide of the pole to the right. Well, Palmero certainly not known for his power. Only has one home run, but he hit that ball a long way. In the right field, out of the reach of Kevin Millar. In from third comes Edgar Renteria with the first Cardinals run. And it's now 2-1. to one. A big hit from the number nine hitter, Orlando Palmero, to drive in a run. Well, Kim got the big out with a man at third base and less than two outs, but then Palmero gets the huge hit, a huge two-out base hit. That ball just stayed out over the plate about knee high, and Palmero on the line past Millar. That's a pretty good at bat by Palmero. Miguel Cairo was 0 for 2, struck out on the first, grounded out in the third. In the top of the Cardinals order. Chopped down the third baseline, foul. Palmero 
not great speed, only the one steal, but always the chance of stealing here with two outs or attempting it. Looking away, one and one. Snap throw over to first base, but back is Palmero. And of course, if you have decent speed, you can get a pretty good jump on Kim because of that uh, delivery. Pretty good offensive numbers. They are second in the National League in batting average, 288. And they have point behind the Atlanta Braves coming into tonight's action. Now, you know, LaRusse is not blessed with uh, great speed on this team. They're, they're way down the bottom of the league in stolen bases, but he'll hit and run a lot. Obviously, not with two outs, but I mean, he'll use that as a weapon instead of the stolen base. Strike makes it two and two. But Sox trying to better what is already a terrific home record as they come in at 18 and nine. With the two victories against Milwaukee over the weekend, the Red Sox bring their road record to 500. They're 17 and 17. Cairo gets a piece to stay alive. See, that's the tough thing about facing Kim. You know, once you pick up the delivery and obviously where his release point is, but the problem after that is you don't know whether he's going to sink that fastball or it's going to rise on you. Not sure which plane to look at exactly. exactly. You're, you're right. That's the one you hope for, the one that doesn't do anything, just stays out over the plate. Cairo missed it. Hey, this one just pretty much stays in the middle of the plate and wow. still hits on top of it. And Kim very fortunate that he fouled that ball off. Cairo's 0 for 2 tonight. He struck out in the first, grounded out to second base in the third inning. Veritek will head out and talk to Kim. Yeah, Dave Wallace, the new pitching coach for the Red Sox, saying before the game that uh, he didn't really know how long it's going to take him to be able to get a grasp on what everybody throws, but uh, he himself said that uh, he sees himself as a great communicator and someone that very quickly and easily will find out what these guys throw and be able to help them in short time and apparently he spent a lot of the day yesterday with Grady Little as well as Tony Cloninger before Tony left and talk a little bit about each one of the guys individual programs that they have a little bit of knowledge of Pedro Martinez early in his career with the Dodgers rounded softly by a second Walker charging flipping up and over Millar into the dugout to third base will go Palmero. They will award second base to Cairo on the wild throw that ends up kicking off the front of the dugout and going up and over it on the wild toss from Todd Walker. Something you don't see very often when a second baseman is going toward first base and then it looked to be an underhand flip and then just throw it over the head of the first baseman. And of course into the Red Sox dugout so that's an extra base. Usually from that point, you see a decent throw, even on the other hand flip. That time, uh, Todd just holding on to the ball too long. It was up over the head of Millar, and it was second and third action. So an infield hit and an error charge to Todd Walker that has two in scoring position now, two down, and Dave Wallace out there to talk to Pyon Yun Kim. We'll get the Globes award-winning sports coverage every day. Call 1-800-984-5335 for 50% off home delivery. The Boston Globe, your world unfolding daily. Well, the situation for Dave Wallace uh, gives him an opportunity kind of to come back to the New England area. As uh, he has uh, a house in the Massachusetts area and one in Florida. He spends a good amount of time here in Massachusetts during the off-season at times. And has a chance to come and live in that house during the season. So uh, he was happy to come home to accept this interim position. Looks like he's making his first phone call down in the bullpen, too. 
J.D. Drew is 0 for 2 tonight. He's done the same thing twice. That's ground out to second base. 4-17 hitter. Runners in scoring position. And two down as they are now. down the first baseline one and one uh, you look down that first baseline you see Dave McKay the first base coach uh, he's been with La Russa a long long time since the time in Oakland and of course Dave Duncan the pitching mm -hmm. coach has always been with Tony 25th year as a manager the eighth for the Cardinals in the air stroke pretty well to deep right Nixon going back looking up it is gone a three-run home run for J.D. Drew, his seventh of the year. And the Cardinals, just like that, lead it 4-2. to two. Well, Don, remember a couple of pitches ago to Cairo, left one out over the plate, and when he does that, it's going to be trouble. And this is trouble, right out over the plate. Didn't sink, didn't rise, and J.D. Drew with the two-out home run. All the runs coming with two outs in this inning. Now Albert Pujols, a DH, one for two. So a remarkable turn of events here. Byung and Kim have been dealing through the first four innings. But the Cardinals here getting it done with two outs in the inning. And now leading four to two. One all fouled off the right side. And it's one and one. I remember J.D. Drew, who was drafted in the first round at one point by the Phillies and did not sign. And a bit of a problem that exists even today, and that's signing first round draft choices. They become so expensive, and some teams unable to do it. And he ended up going back into the draft. This has popped up. Left side, Bill Miller coming in on the grass at third. And takes care of the final out, but a four-run Cardinals inning has St. Louis on top 4-2. Bottom of the fifth inning back at Fenway. It's now 4-2. The Cardinals on top as they grab uh, four runs in the top of the fifth inning. Johnny Damon's 0 for 2 tonight. And a new lease on life here for Woody Williams, who gave up two runs in the first inning. Things have changed quite a bit now with his two-run lead in place. He's thrown 75 pitches so far tonight. Woody Williams, 36 years of age, a veteran who began his career with the Toronto Blue Jays getting to the Blue Jays for the first time back in 1993. Had a stop over in San Diego for three seasons and now in his third year with the St. Louis Cardinals. Combined to go 15 and 9 in 2001 between the Padres and the Cardinals. Last year was 9 and 4 in 17 starts and this year off to the 8 and 1 record. Sharply hit to the shortstop. Renteria knocks it downstairs with it. And he's got himself a terrific arm. Throws out Johnny Damon for the first out. It's time now for the Heineken. What's on tap? Well, the Red Sox with two more games against the Cardinals. Our coverage beginning at 6.30 for each game. And then it is the weekend against the Astros and Jimmy Williams. First game on UPM 38 in Boston. Nesson outside. Saturday only on Nesson. And then Sunday, WBZ Channel 4 will have the game inside Boston. Nesson outside of Boston with that action beginning at 2 o'clock. What a nice homestand this is, you know, for the fans. Uh, two very nice teams coming in from the National League. Fans like interleague play, and they get to see two good ball clubs. Certainly is the road teams the Red Sox played in Pittsburgh and Milwaukee. Certainly not commanding the attention that these two teams will certainly bring. I'll tell you this, Don. I, I never thought that I would say that we are close to the field here at Fenway in our booth. But after <laughs> being in Pittsburgh, this is like being right on top of the action. It is. It's amazing. Now, that's a gorgeous ballpark. Beautiful. The... the 
That area up there with the pressures, that was an afterthought. Very much so. They almost, it's almost like they built it and said, there's something else we need to put on top. Oh, yeah, the radio and TV. <laughs> Impress. <laughs> Here's strike three to Todd Walker. That's just the first strikeout for Woody Williams, and there's two down in the inning. Well, we'd like to welcome tonight's visitors to the Dunkin' Dugout. Dunkin' Donuts proud to host area youth and charity organizations at every Red Sox home game. Here they are up in the Dunkin' Dugout. A real dugout seat, too, huh? They are. It's just like being in the dugout. You're just up in the bleachers. No Myers one for two. He doubled his last time up. You're right, though. Thinking about Pittsburgh, how high we were. To come back here, I mean, it seems like we're right there. Oh, right on top of the action. And <laughs> yeah, this and Texas had been really the highest, too, I'd say, in the American League. Fouled off. 0-2 oh now to Nomar. Toronto's pretty high, too. Yes, it is. And far back. I would love to have had the chance to do a game where you guys worked uh, down above the screen. Yeah, that was a nice seat. used to be the old press box obviously bigger than that but that's where we would broadcast the game from I mean you had to be able to hear the guys around home plate and it was it's better than Detroit because you didn't have to flinch every time the ball went to home plate you were just far enough back but yet a terrific seat told that was not climate controlled in there they could get no. a little warm <laughs> yeah, get a little warm <laughs> nomar sends it down the right field line it's bending towards the pole and will find its way foul my old partner god bless him ned martin uh, many a day in the summer would have his bathing suit on there <laughs> not a pretty sight either <laughs> well, i'm sure the sun beat in there pretty good Well, we are now a couple stories higher than the old box. Popped up. Foul off first. Over goes the catcher, Matheny, but he won't have a play. Four or five rows back. We are higher now. The first season of this press box in 1989, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, certainly few stories higher than the old booth down there. I remember coming to that booth, uh, or coming to games and looking up into that booth. Uh, we came to games to see Ken Coleman and Ned Martin. And you seem like you are much closer to them, which is a thrill. This is lined into center field. Jim Edmonds moving over to cut it off on a hop. A two-out single for Nomar garcia Parra. Well, the Red Sox hoping to do some two-out damage uh, like the Cardinals did in the top of this inning. All four Cardinal runs are coming after two outs. Nomar with the base hit to keep Woody Williams away from the 1-2-3 inning and get Ramirez to the plate. And he with a double in the first inning to drive in a run. He lined out to center field in the third inning. Williams pitch count getting up there. He's now thrown 90 pitches in his outing. No action in the Cardinals bullpen. Red Sox leading the major leagues in home batting average at 314 on the season where they have been 18 and 9. They trail tonight 4 to 2 batting here in the bottom of the fifth inning. to Renteria. Goes the short way to second to dispose of Garcia Parra. We've played 5-4-2 St. Louis. Back at Fenway, 4-2 Cardinals as we go to the top of the sixth inning. Stay tuned after the game for W.B. Mason's Extra Innings, New England's Red Sox post-game show with extra highlights, extra interviews, and extra analysis hosted by Bob Rogers and a new lineup of studio analysts. After the last inning, the action is just beginning. 
Well, Byun-Yun Kim's night is over after five innings tonight. He will turn things over to the right-handed veteran reliever, Rudy Sienes. Fifth appearance of the season for Sienes. He's worked five and a third, going four hits and two earned runs. Only one walk and six strikeouts. His last outing was Friday against the Brew Crew. A couple of innings in that game and had three strikeouts. Well, the Red Sox trailing by two. Byun Yun Kim working five innings, giving up six hits, four runs. He didn't walk anybody, and he struck out two tonight. On a beautiful evening at Fenway Park. Very comfortable conditions here tonight. Jim Edmonds, Scott Rowland, and Edgar Renteria to face Rudy Sienes here in the sixth inning. to Edmonds makes it one and one. Edmonds now 32 came over to the Cardinals from Anaheim in a trade for pitcher Kent Bottenfield and infielder Adam Kennedy. And of course Adam Kennedy getting a lot of work as part of the world champion Anaheim Angels. Edmonds off a season where he had a career high 311 batting average. Last year hit 28 home runs and drove in 83 runs. This year already with 15 home runs. Sends it foul on the ground and it evens up at two and two. It's already his fourth season with the St. Louis Cardinals since coming over in that trade. My guys get to St. Louis, and it doesn't take them long to sign long-term contracts, huh? McGuire, when he went over there, loved it. Scott Rowland immediately signing a long-term deal when he got to uh, St. Louis. Great baseball city. I'm disappointed that we're not going there this season, as well as Chicago, certainly. There's Nomar at shortstop. Wild throw, but Millar able to keep the toe in the bag to retire Edmonds. A nice adjustment by Kevin Millar at first base. Of course, Nomar with that sidearm throw. This one uh, gets away just a bit. And Millar has to readjust going to the outfield side of first base and keeping contact with that first base bag. Nice play by Kevin Millar. That's one when you get back in the dugout. Nomar will give him a little pat on the back, say thank you. One away for Scott Rowland, who's lined out twice, once to first and once to third. There's nothing to show for it. He's 0 for 2. Oh, yeah, big cut from Rowland. is into the game here in the sixth inning. Taking over for Byun Yun Kim, who is on the hook tonight after going the first five. On the other side, Woody Williams has gone the first five innings and he's given up two runs in the first, but has not given up a run since. And Woody Woodward's gone two-thirds of an inning in this game. Woody Woodward. <laughs> <laughs> there for a strike. I thought it was only one out. We had Woody Woodward in there. I think I've done it twice. twice. <laughs> yeah, I think it's for two-thirds. <laughs> well, I'll include him on my scorecard then just to make you happy. Woody Williams, who will be coming on again as it appears. Nobody warming in the bullpen. Very nearly to the 100 pitch mark in this game. The one-two. In the dirt, kicks away from Veritech. Nobody on, so we won't fret. Well, Jerry, as part of this homestand, we're going to be doing a game from the Green Monster, which will be a, a different look. Yeah, it certainly will. Yeah, we'll be doing a game backwards. <laughs> Saturday night, we'll be out there in the midst of all of that above the Green Monster. I think the toughest thing is going to be the balls in the air. 
Not the ones coming towards us. You can figure that out. But center and right could be an adventure. The 2-2 two -two is swung on and missed. Well, Pedro Martinez is scheduled to return to the mound when the Red Sox and Cardinals continue the series tomorrow night at 7.05. The Cubs wrap up the three-game series at 7.05 Thursday night. Tickets are available 24 hours a day, toll-free at 877-RED-SOX-9 at redsox.com and during business hours at Fenway. Pedro tomorrow night scheduled to go about, what, 45, 50 pitches tops? That is correct. Brady said he was hopeful that they could get uh, three innings. Early after he is going to pitch here tomorrow night, John Burkett is ready to go, kind of backed up in behind him. So the Red Sox will use two starters tomorrow night. Kind of be a little bit like spring training in that regard. And Grady said that uh, he would not hesitate in uh, taking him out after 45 pitches. And there may be another start after that where he is sort of held back in the pitch count department. Deep short. Nomar off balance in the air. The throw is high and it pulls Millar off the bat to elevate to handle the throw and Renteria stands at first base with two down. Well that's a heck of a play by Nomar. I mean that's his favorite play going to his right throwing from the grass sidearm and uh, just is going to lift Millar off that first base bag. See him go up to try to catch it up goes the foot and down comes the foot of Renteria. So an infield hit for Renteria. It is his second hit of the night. And for the Cardinals, their seventh. Here's Tino Martinez, who grounded out to first and fly to the track last time. Pitch out. Renteria not going anywhere. Yeah, we mentioned that this team does not run much, but Renteria does run. He has nine steals and he's been caught only twice. And of course, with two outs, people would expect him to attempt it if he feels he can get the jump. Up and away. CNA is missing, and it's now 2 0. Oh. Tino Martinez, of course, beginning his career with the Seattle Mariners in 1991. He went on to spend six years with the New York Yankees, six very successful years with New York. And it did not work out that he was able to return there. It seemed as if the Yankees, year in and year out, were in a way waiting for Nick Johnson to arrive. Well, then it was time for Nick Johnson, and they went out and got Jason Giambi anyway. Tino Martinez going to St. Louis. Last year's first season with the Cardinals. And a four-pitch walk here to continue the inning. First walk all night given up by Red Sox pitching. The catcher, number 22, Mike Matheny. Here's the catcher, Mike Matheny, who's popped out to second base and fly to right. Cena's got Edmonds to ground out, Scott Rowland to strike out. And he's running into some trouble here. Renteria with an infield hit and now walk to Tino Martinez. Two on, two outs. And it's sent foul off the right side. Fourth season with the Cardinals, 32 year old catcher. As the count even up at one and one, was in the Milwaukee Brewers system and played for the Brewers from 94 through 1998. Spent a season in Toronto in 99 and has been with the Cardinals the last three plus seasons. Out of the University of Michigan.
punch and Tino Martinez down at first base. He's really getting a big lead. He can do that because uh, Millar is off the line and deep, but may not be a bad uh, time to try a little pickoff after the ball gets uh, by the hitter. Feeney goes lunging after that pitch and is down one and two. Well, certainly the Red Sox trying to better their record in interleague play. Last year, you really could point to it as one of the bigger issues as to why the Red Sox are not in the postseason. They were five and thirteen against the National League, and a two and seven here at Fenway Park against the NL. On the ground, off the glove of Cienes. He slowed it down completely, and by the time Walker can pick it up, he can do nothing with it. Well, it's just a reaction play by the pitcher. Now, obviously, if he lets the ball go, that's probably going to be right at Walker, the second baseman, but, I mean, you're 60 feet away, and the, the reaction is to try to catch the ball. It deflects off the glove, and once it does that, there's no play for anybody. But if that ball gets by him, Walker's in a perfect position to get the probably forced play at second base. So the base is loaded now with two outs. And coming with two outs, Orlando Palmero, the number nine hitter. Who singled in the number nine spot in the fifth inning to drive in the first St. Louis run and really to start the rally as they would go on to score four times in the fifth. The career 333 hitter in the spot. It's 2 0 now to Palmero. Not a bad place to be, huh? 2 0, bases loaded. You can narrow that zone down to about a dime. If it's not there, you let it pass. And a very tough spot for Rudy Cien is now. Fouled off the left side. Had the pitch, too, right down the middle with the fastball where Cien has to go. And Palmero late on the swing. Pretty good fastball. 93 miles per hour that time from CNS. Well, behind three and one, and again, Palmero in the driver's seat, especially now where. There's no place to put him. The yep. base is loaded. All the pressure here on the pitcher. Has to throw a strike. And does. Amiro did not agree, but it's now a full count. With two outs, the runners will be in motion here. So anything in any of the gaps. They play three. And as soon as stares in for a sign. Runners are off, and it's lined outside down the right field line, down towards Canvas Alley. Here you see it is. In a jam here, the base is loaded, two down. The 3 2. Chop again outside of first and foul down towards the tarp area. So Paul Merrill helped him out a bit there, chasing what appeared to be ball four. Rudy is 34 years of age in his 17th pro season. So had a minor league deal with the Red Sox on May 8th. And on the big league club here out of the bullpen. With the first two outs pretty quickly. Now Renteria at third, Martinez at second, Matheny at first. 
And a full count to Orlando Palmero. Popped up in the air to left field. Manny Ramirez has it sized up and takes care of it front number three. The Cardinals leave them loaded. Headed to the bottom of the sixth, 4-2 St. Louis. Back at Fenway, 4-2. The Cardinals on top. Red Sox coming to bat here in the bottom of the sixth inning. David Ortiz, Kevin Millar, and Bill Miller to bat here in the bottom of the sixth against Woody Williams. Ortiz jolts it deep in far to right center field. Edmonds on the move to the track. It'll land in the triangle. Bang around a little bit. Ortiz picks up his second double of the night. Sox baseball on Nesson is brought to you by Dodge, by Foxwoods Resort Casino, and by Rico. Well, the first double by Ortiz in this game was to the opposite field, left field, that one uh, all the way to the 420. And when I see Edmonds going back on the ball, I always think he's going to catch it. <laughs> Couldn't quite <laughs> catch up to that one. Well, he's done it so many times before. Kevin Millar is 0 for 2. He's grounded out and flied out. And Woody Williams up to 94 pitches in his outing now as he draws closer to 100. And so far, nobody up in the Cardinals' bullpen. Has been extended quite a bit. A lot of long outings this season for Woody Williams. Now because of some injuries too in their bullpen, they've had some problems down there. Although a big boost as they get in Isringhausen back. The most he's thrown this year is 123. As it's grounded to roll in the third. And he'll throw out Millar. High throw, but Tino Martinez comes down on the bag. Well, for every run of the Red Sox catch stealing this season on Nesson, you have a chance to win a Lojack stolen vehicle recovery system. Log on to boston.com slash Nesson. Enter the date, opponent, and runner's name for your chance to win the Lojack caught stealing sweepstakes. Ortiz stands at second with one down, and it brings up Bill Miller. Yeah, the most pitches for Woody Williams this year, 123 pitches. And a 7-4 win against Houston. One hopper to Cairo, who throws out Bill Miller, two down. No advance for Ortiz, who remains at second base. And not a good thing, the leadoff double, and then a couple of quick outs, and Ortiz still at second base. Two down for Trot Nixon, who has singled and fly to the track in left field. One for two tonight. Jockeying underneath it, but stays with it to make the catch. Leadoff double wasted. We played six, four, two Cardinals. Tom Garrett along with Ken Burns, just uh, taking in the game tonight. I, I am. I'm uh, flying out tomorrow morning, and I thought, what better way to spend my evening than here at Fenway Park? You hear the debate about interleague every time this starts again, but I guess this is certainly the upside, whether you're a pro or con, is seeing the Cardinals back at Fenway. Well, that's the most exciting thing of all. It just brings back that uh, impossible dream year in 67 and Yaz and that whole thing. It's wonderful. Surprised by the number of Cardinals fans that are here tonight? I was. When he hit the home run, I thought, my God, half the stadium stood up. It was uh, uh, very worrisome, but we'll get it back. We'll get them back. Taking a lot of baseball still? Do you have the time? I, I, I watch as many of the Sox games as I can on this, and, and that's usually I see at least two-thirds of them s s apart or on the radio in the car or something like that. Um, I'm not getting here as much as I want, and this reminds me how much I want to be here. Got to point out, that was a spontaneous Nesson plug, right? I did not put you up to that. <laughs> no, no, but thanks <laughs> for the uh, popcorn. <laughs> Good birds. Thanks very much. <laughs> it's great to be with you. Guys, right, back to you. All right, Tom, thanks very much. Well, it is on now to the top of the seventh inning. Did you see the uh, baseball documentary? Did you ever see the entire 18 nights of it uh, that Ken Burns did? 
I think I saw 17 nights. Did you miss the 18? <laughs> miss one of them. Not sure which <laughs> night. That is terrific. As Miguel Cairo leads it off. Cairo, J.D. Drew, and Albert Pujols to bat here in the top half of the seventh inning. Fouled off the right side. Did you have HBO uh, in Milwaukee? Yes. Did you get a chance to see uh, Gotti and Mickey Ward? Yes, I saw the well, our game one a little bit later, so I only saw the last couple of rounds. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you, those, <laughs> those guys have fought three times. I wish they could fight every month <laughs> for about the next three years. Is Ward done now? That's it, though, he, right? That, he said that was his last fight, yeah. Wow. What a what a warrior. You don't need them to fight anybody else. Just keep fighting each other, and we'll keep watching. And they're not title <laughs> fights. No. And they're better than, than any title fight you want to see. <laughs> they just keep beating on each other. They refuse to go down. When they do go down, they get back up. <laughs> How many more hits can they take, though, from each other? I mean, at some point, you gotta got to wrap uh, it they, up. They both end up in the hospital after the <laughs> fight. <laughs> two, two sent foul back to the backstop. Cena is on for his second inning of relief with two outs last inning got himself into a whole mess of trouble with the bases loaded and two down but was able to get out of it. Orlando Palmero finally fly to left. Cena has battled away and finished him off as this is fouled off the right side. In fact Rudy was down two and oh and three and one in counts to Orlando Palmero but got out of the inning. I can't be a hundred percent sure Don but it looked to me that that three two pitch was a change up something a little bit off speed not his fastball and what courage to throw that on the three two count with the bases loaded. That one gets away and off the glove of Veritek back to the backstop. Moving into that leadoff spot instead of uh, Vina, who's on the Sable list. Uh, 255 as a leadoff hitter coming into the game tonight. One for three. Popped up left side. Nomar drifting to the short lawn and left. And takes care of out number one. Well, RedSox.com has the broadest selection of items for the team you love. Shop RedSox.com, the official site of wearing your heart on your sleeve, cap, pullover, and lots more. One down, and here's J.D. Drew hit a big three-run home run in the fifth inning. At the time, it was 2-1 Red Sox. Three-run home run into the bullpen in right field, and... It is a 4-2 game now. The score the same as he bats here in the top of the seventh inning with one out. Tony La Russa owns 1,957 managerial wins, placing him eighth on the all-time wins list. And it's certainly first among active managers. And then last year claiming his fourth career manager of the year award. Red Shundist and uh, Wadi Herzog have more Cardinals wins than Tony La Russa. Red Shandis was the manager of the Cardinals, of course, when they beat the Red Sox in the 67 uh, World Series. Pitch walk to J.D. Drew. So Rudy Cien is very careful in dealing with J.D. Drew with one down. 
It's the second walk tonight given up by Red Sox pitching and both given up by Rudy Cianes. Here's Albert Pujols, singled in the first inning and has flied out twice since. One for three tonight. Starts him off away. Scoreboard and left center said that that pitch was 97 miles per hour. Lana Sienna's fastballs have been clocked to 95 plus. That's 2 and 0. As he falls behind. His first night as interim pitching coach for the Red Sox on the phone down to the Boston bullpen and somebody's going to hop up down there. He's in the dirt and it's now three and oh so what he's seeing is has thrown seven straight balls here. Walk J.D. Drew on four pitches and now falls behind Ramiro Mendoza who had been up earlier is up again. Yeah, it shouldn't take him too long to get ready as you mentioned Don the second time that he's uh been loosening tonight. Hit pretty well to right. Nixon on the move back towards the track. It's over his head and out of the yard. Into the Boston bullpen. A two-run home run for Albert Pujols. His 17th of the year. And the Cardinals widen their lead to 6-2. to two. Now, this is amazing to me. A 3-0 count, just to give you an idea what kind of hit it is. What do you, most guys do 3-0? They pull the ball, don't they? Right. How about this throw? A line drive to right center field on a high fastball on a 3-0 count. I mean, oh, that's a pretty good hitting right there. Didn't try to pull it. Went with the pitch and hit a liner into the bullpen for the home run. Really had the green light, as I'm sure he does a lot in 3 0 counts. As Jim Edmonds takes ball one, seeing it is really struggling now. Yeah, you would think that Mendoza would be ready by now. In the dirt, and Rudy right now really struggling. 2 0. He's going to get back on the phone to make sure Ramiro Mendoza is ready. Looks like he may have said he's not ready. Mendoza is rapid fire out there still. This is in the air to left field. Manny Ramirez heading back. We're on the warning track with room. A little move to his left at the end, and he can't make the catch. Then second base goes Jim Edmonds on a ball misplayed by Manny. A late move to his left and then can't come up with it. Well, that's not going to sit well with the Fenway faithful, that's for sure. Looked to be just a, a routine fly ball. Not a lot of wind involved tonight. As a matter of fact, the, the flag just straight down and Manny starts going to the side and just deflects right off the glove. You don't see it happen often, but the one-handed catch doesn't look good when you drop it. Rudy it is headed off here with one down of the inning. We'll step aside. 5-2 Cardinals. Welcome back, everybody, to Fenway Park. It is now 7-2 St. Louis on top. This is Walter Levy, who has uh, won a play-by-play -play announcer for the night. Thanks to Sam Adams, and you have the bottom of the seventh inning. Well, thank you very much, Don Arcillo, and good evening, everybody. I wish we had better news here at Fenway Park. The Red Sox trailing in the ballgame by a score of 7-2. to two. The first pitch coming in to Jason Veritek is a strike call. Woody Williams, very effective, the top ERA leader in the National League, a 1.99 ERA, 8-1 record. He's been good tonight. Here comes the pitch. Veritek swings and misses on an inside fastball, and we get a 1-1 one -one count. 
Red Sox have been undone by the home run ball, actually, uh, Jerry. A uh, couple of long drives to right field, I think, have been a uh, factor in this ball game. Yeah, J.D. Drew with the big one, the three-run home run, and, of course, Pujols on the 3-0 count uh, to the opposite field to put a cushion on the board for the Cardinals. As uh, the pitch just came into Veritech, he fouled it off to the left side near the dugout, and we've got a count now of uh, two strikes on Jason Veritech. Woody Williams on the mound, one of the best pitchers in the National League. Uh, he writes in there with Kevin Brown and Kevin Millwood and Sean Chacon of the Colorado Rockies. Veritek uh, ready the pitch. Outside, looked like he might have wasted one there and one and two the count. Also have a new first baseman, Eduardo Perez, comes in to replace Tino Martinez at first base. He is, I believe, the son of uh, the Hall of Famer. That's right, Tony. Tony. Inside pitch to Veritek, count even at two and two. Beautiful evening here at Fenway Park in Boston. Where else would you want to be? A uh, jam-packed crowd of uh, rooters here, but uh, Red Sox trailing by a score of seven to two. Here comes the pitch from Williams, and he uh, follows it off again into the dugout, and uh, the count remains at two and two. Jason Veritek, uh, been with the Sox for uh, six seasons, a fine catcher and uh, is a switch hitter and of course batting left against the right-handed serves of Woody Williams. Now Williams the pitch and it's fouled back this way off to our left and the count remains even at two and two. Now Walter you're from Framingham right? That's correct I am from Framingham I'm a former teacher there at uh, what was then Framingham North High School and it merged about oh, 10 years ago and became Framingham High School. 30 years of experience at that, right? Yes, sir. Well, actually, 35 totally. I taught on Long Island, taught in Boston, so I started my career about the mid-1960s. And now you just spend all that money you made, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> the pitch. Ground ball just fouled off the left side. Got a piece of it. Stays alive. Two and two. Looks like uh, the, uh, the uh, St. Louis Cardinals pretty much set up straight away for Veritek. And uh, we got word here that uh, Tino Martinez has a strained right hamstring. He's day-to-day. -day. That's why Perez in the pitch. And it's down the first baseline, but just foul. And that will keep the count remaining at 2-2. Two and two. Let me say what a pleasure it is to be with both Don Arcillo and Jerry Remy. I listen to you guys, watch you pretty much every night. You do a great job, and it's uh, wonderful to be here and have this opportunity. I certainly appreciate it. Now, this is great for you, and you're doing a great job. Well, thank you very much, Jerry. All right, the 2-2 count coming in now from Woody Williams and the pitch. In it's slap two with a second baseman, Miguel Cairo. Flips over Perez, a 4-3, and that'll be the first out for the Red Sox in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Again, if you may have just joined us, the Red Sox trailing in the ballgame by a score of 7-2. to two. Uh, Coming up to bat will be Johnny Damon. Uh, Johnny, a very fine player, spent a lot of time with the KC Royals and the Oakland Athletics, and uh, he's now with the Red Sox in his second season. A uh, very fine base dealer, has stolen 11 of 12 bases this year, so he has a great percentage. Actually dropped down to the bottom, but back up now in the leadoff spot. Outside pitch from Woody Williams, makes the count 1-0. Uh, looks like we've got, uh, of course, uh, Scott Rowland, the all-star gold glove third baseman, right on, almost on the edge of the uh, infield area there, right on the, was foot on the uh, dirt part and on on the grass part. Here comes the pitch, and it's outside. Oh, called it a strike. All right, I prejudged that one. It was right on the, right on the black, Jerry. Yeah, I, I would say just wait <laughs> a tad longer before making that call. You okay. never know with these umpires, you know? I know it. I know it. Thank you, Jerry. All right, the pitch, that one was outside, and uh, that one now makes the count two and one. We've got one out. We're in the last of the seventh inning here at Fenway Park in Boston. I can't tell you what a beautiful evening it is here, and it's great to be with uh, Jerry and Don, and just an ideal night, packed crowd. Where else would you want to be? The pitch. And it comes back this way off to our left, and that'll bring the count to two balls and two strikes. We got a sellout here, Don tells me. 34,937, the eighth sellout this season at Fenway Park. So the Red Sox, uh, big series here against the uh, St. Louis Cardinals and Johnny Damon swinging from the left side. The pitch from Williams, and that's slapped out into right field. Looks like Drew will have to run hard, may have a beat on it, and he makes the catch right at the foul line. So if you're scoring 0-9 uh, on a fly out down the right field line, the second out of the inning for the Boston Red Sox. They need to get some base runners, Jerry. Get back in this game. Well, Woody Williams started off uh, shaky in this game back in the first inning. Almost looked like he wasn't completely loose, but he has certainly turned it on since then. And uh, Red Sox have not been able to do anything with him since back in the first inning. Exactly correct. He looked a little shaky early going. Got a couple hits in the first, couple in the second. Looked like they might have had him on the ropes a little bit, but he settled down. Pitch coming in now uh, to uh, Todd Walker. Todd Walker, the very fine second baseman, an excellent hitter. And he's batting uh, 312 on the season. And uh, 
Todd takes the first pitch for a ball. Second pitch coming in. That's slap foul uh, into the dugout, actually, and uh, the count is one and one. I'm rooting for some hits here for obvious reasons. The Red Sox need them, but you need a longer inning. I know it, Jerry. I was <laughs> one, two, three inning. I was saying to Gary Roy of Nesson and some of the other folks, Jenkins, I wanted to stay here a little bit and be with you guys and enjoy this, the pitch, and that's going to be a uh, ball, two and one. I'm, I want to see Nomar. I was hoping he'd come up. Uh, actually, when we had the contest, uh, guys, uh, I actually got into the preliminaries by announcing that Easter Sunday home run, uh, that walk-off homer that he had, the 6-5 to five win. And there's a slap drive. Looks like Drew may have a shot at this. He's going hard along the line. It's a fair ball, or is it a foul? Um, okay, fair ball. Looked like it was fair, and uh, may have been touched by a fan. It's hard to see a little bit obscure view here, but uh, looked like it may have been touched by a fan, and that's going to be called a double. So they do get a base runner. Uh, Todd Walker, thank you very much, if I may. And uh, at least he keeps the inning alive for the Red Sox and uh, gets a nice double for himself. So that'll bring up Nomar Mar Garcia Parra. And Nomar, uh, very fine shortstops, made some very fine plays. Made a beautiful play in the hole with a good play by Kevin Millar on that stretch. And uh, he's been all over the place. Of course, uh, he's uh, in the game. Uh, Nomar Garcia Parra has doubled and singled. So he's got two hits out of three on the, D on the evening. All right, Woody Williams now from the stretch, the pitch, and that is foul just off a third, just outside the bag. That probably would have easily played it, Todd Walker, with the Red Sox third run, but it was just foul. And a beautiful night, as I said, and it's a pleasure to be here. And I'd like to say thank you to the Boston Beer Company, Brewers of Samuel Adams Beer, to Nesson, uh, Gary Roy and company, and also to the Boston Red Sox Baseball Club for the opportunity to be here with uh, Don and uh, Jerry Remy. The pitch coming in. Swing and a miss on a fastball from Woody Williams. I can see where uh, he would be the 8-1 and one pitcher. And, and, and looking over his stats, Jerry, he really was a 500 pitcher with Toronto and San Diego. But uh, I think in looking it over, he's about an 800 pitcher now with the St. Louis Cardinals. Yeah, this is certainly a different guy than early in his career with the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, top numbers in the National League right now. Right. Two strike pitch to Nomar and check swing. Did he get him? No. Oh, thank you. All right, one and two pitch as uh, there are two out in this inning. The Red Sox are trailing in the ballgame again by a score of seven to two. And uh, Woody Williams is now kind of cruising along. He's pitching very effectively. He's got good control of his uh, pitches. And the Red Sox haven't been able to really solve them, although they did get a double from Todd Walker. Nomar with the one two count now coming in from Woody Williams. And uh, he checks the runner at second. And here comes the pitch. And as a slap drive, deep, deep to deep to left field. Look out, is it? Off the wall. And that's going to bound into the out. And Nomar's going for another triple. And he's going to get it. Nomar's fifth triple in about the last week or so, I think. And I know he had a, some in Pittsburgh. And Nomar Garcia Parra with a triple off the left field wall. Plates Todd Walker, and the Red Sox get a run. So it's now a 7-3 to three ball game, and Nomar on third. No, we usually say a Fenway double, but here's a Fenway triple as this ball scrapes the wall on the way down, then got by a couple of those St. Louis outfielders for Garcia Parra, triple number nine on the season. That's why it got by. It hit the top of the scoreboard, and a stranger bounce off the scoreboard. And Garcia Parra now leads the American League in triples with nine total. Wow, he's just been on fire, and those triples have just been coming in bunches for him. And uh, Nomar has been uh, throwing the leather at shortstop and doing a great job at the plate as well. And hey, Walter, you almost got the call of Fenway. I know, I know it, Jerry. I was looking up, looking up. It's uh, I, I thought for a moment I had one, but uh, I'll settle for the triple, Jerry. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> at least you got the Red Sox a run. I, I, better I, than he could do. He could <laughs> go in it for seven innings. <laughs> All right. Woody Williams uh, getting a little bit of uh, taste of action now in the sense of getting uh, pierced his armor a little bit, so to speak, as uh, he's given up a, a, a run here on the Nomar triple plating Todd Walker. And that's going to bring up Manny. Manny Ramirez, hoping maybe, I think, to atone for an error that he made uh, in a previous inning where there was a seemingly a pretty easy fly ball out there that he dis mishandled, and it led to an error and it cost the Red Sox. So uh, Manny, uh, let's see if we can atone for that error and get some another run for the Red Sox. Uh, Red Sox are capable of doing anything in the late innings. We saw it in Milwaukee Saturday night. You never give up on this team this year, for sure. Uh, they've come back several times, uh, losing by three and four and five runs and have plated several runs in the late innings to uh, to win a ball game. So let's hope that late inning lightning can continue. The pitch from Williams. That's slapped out in the right field deep. Back goes through. Back, 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 back. Gone! Well, 
we saw Pujols go home run to the opposite field early, and now we see Manny to the opposite field. Catch him, Athene, set up away. That ball out over the plate, and Ramirez into the St. Louis bullpen for the home run. For Manny, number 13 on the season, picks up his third RBI of the night. All right, what excitement. I did get a homer, Jerry. You got one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the Red Sox are actually, they're, they're uh, back in this ball game now, and they're only down now by a score of 7-5. to five. So two runs down when they were down by actually uh, five runs as we entered the inning. So uh, it's been great. And Woody Williams is uh, getting rocked. Looks like Tony La Russa is uh, coming out uh, to maybe make a pitching change here because uh, Woody Williams may have reached his, uh, his limit. Uh, Woody Williams generally, Jerry, I think, in looking at his stats, goes, six, seven innings, and then sometimes runs into a little bit of a wall, and uh, I don't think he's had many complete games this year that I that I know. No, not many around baseball either, Walter. It's going to be Jeff Becerro that's going to be coming in, the left-hander replacing Woody Williams. Okay, Jeff Becerro is an old uh, friend of ours in a sense. When I say friend, he's pitched for the Boston Red Sox in the past, and uh, uh, he's coming in and uh, has seen a lot of action. And we'll be right back after these messages. Back at Fenway, Woody Williams out of the game. The five runs allowed after just allowing that home run to Manny Ramirez. Still has the two-run lead, and left-handed Jeff Becerro coming on for the 30th time this season. Becerro, 21 hits in 20 innings. He has walked seven, struck out 13. Opponents have hit 268 against Becerro. Last time he worked in a ball game was on Sunday. That was in that game at Baltimore. Got a hold in that game. Okay, we got David Ortiz now coming to bat. He's got a couple of doubles in the ball game, so he's uh, had some offensive production here, and uh, he is in the uh, the role of the designated hitter. Uh, we have two out in the inning, but the Red Sox have played at three runs, and let's hope they can keep this going as uh, we'll take the serve nows of Jeff Pizarro, lefty against lefty. The pitch and a swing by uh, Ortiz, and he fouls it off to the right side. So an 0-1 count. Jeff Pizarro, 40 years old. He was with the Red Sox many years ago, or some years ago, and he's been around the league of many teams. Cubs, I believe, several other teams. He's well-traveled, and uh, being a left-handed pitcher, Jerry, I imagine he's a, a valuable item for many teams to come in and do some relief work. Yeah, it also has that uh, split finger fastball that he throws. All right, the 0-1 count now to David Ortiz. The pitch. Well, that was called a uh, ball. It was low. It looked like it was over the plate, but uh, a little bit low, and it's going to be a 1-1 one, one count. By the way, I love your home run call. Back, 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 back. It's like, it's like Boomer running. I know. Well, I watched the Boomer. You know, I'm picking up from him. I may have to, you know, call him a call or something. <laughs> All right. Here comes the uh, pitch from Pizarro, and that is a strike. Did he go? It looked like he might have made a, a swing at it, but in any event, it is a strike, so it's one and two. We've got two out here in the bottom of the seventh. The Red Sox have countered with three runs. They're trailing in the ball game by a score of seven to five here at Fenway Park in Boston on a beautiful evening for baseball. Packed crowd here. It's exciting. It's thrilling, and I'm very happy to be with you, and I hope you're enjoying the telecast. All right, Pizarro with the pitch, and he swings. That's a base hit into right field. Drew will pick that up on a couple of bounces. Got it back into the infield, and the Red Sox are starting to get their hitting shoes on. Now, David Ortiz right now, doesn't matter, right hand or left hand, he's swinging the bat very well. Up over 300 now with his batting average. Gets an inside fastball. You would think Pizarro would want to stay away from Ortiz, but leaves that fastball inside and on the line to right field for the base hit. All right, that's going to bring up Kevin Millar. Kevin is uh, 0 for 3 on the night. He's uh, grounded to short, and he's uh, flied out to left field, and he's grounded to third. So he is uh, 0 for 3, looking to break out of this 0 for 3 situation. Runner on first, Ortiz. The pitch coming in, and that is a strike on the outside corner. So the count now is 0 and 1. Red Sox again fighting back as they have throughout the season. They are now trailing by a score of 7 to 5. Line score to this point, 7 runs and 11 hits and no errors for the Cardinals. 5 runs, 11 hits and 2 errors for the Red Sox. Checking the runner is Bizarro. Here comes the pitch. Swing and it is a foul ball at home plate. So quickly, Kevin Millar is 0-2. Again, the Red Sox uh, got out to a 2 to nothing lead early in the ball game. Had a couple of doubles. Manny Ramirez instrumental plating Todd Walker. Uh, they got another double from Ortiz down the left field line, so it made it 2 to nothing. But uh, the Cardinals have used the home run ball to uh, take the uh, then 7-2 lead. But three runs here in the bottom of the seventh have made it 7-5. Two out in the inning. Jeff Pizarro, the delivery. 
just off the plate, and the ball called, so we've got a one and two count. And I think it was tough, Jerry, for him to lay off that pitch. Uh, I don't look good from here. I don't know. But yeah, anytime you have two strikes, obviously you're uh, thinking about protecting the plate. All right, Pizarro will be checking the runner, David Ortiz, at first. The count one and two, setting up outside Matheny, and it is outside. The count is two and two. Fans getting a little excited now. You can hear it in the background. Walter, would you like to use the telestrator while you're up here? <laughs> no, no. I leave that to you, Jerry. <laughs> Are you going to let him use your telestrator? I, I'm in front of Wally here. I, he's a guest. I I never never Wally is guarding me. All right, let's go. All right, the count, two and two, as we've got Kevin Millar at the plate. Pizarro on the mound in the stretch. Going to take a look at David Ortiz at first, being held by Perez. The pitch. Inside, three and two. So uh, battling back from the 0-2 count, three and two the count now on Kevin Millar and Jeff Pizarro. Uh, I think, Jerry, if there's an Achilles heel in the Cardinals, it might be in their relief core. Yeah, they've had some injuries out there that have hurt them. All right, the fans really on their feet now, and they're coming to their feet. Three and two, the pitch to Millar. Pizarro looks in. He throws, and there's a shot to uh, second Cairo up with it. Guns to Perez, and that's the end of the inning. But the Red Sox do get three runs and get back in the ball game. Let me say thank you very much to Jerry Remy, to my right, the very fine analyst here on Nesson, and to Don Arcillo, the play-by-play. -play. It's been a thrill. And I want to say again, thank you, Boston Beer, Brewers of Sam Adams, Nesson, and the Boston Red Sox Baseball Club. Thank you, gentlemen. Very good. Top of the eighth inning back at Fenway. It is seven to five now. Three run bottom of the seventh inning. <laughs> that was outstanding. That was terrific. As uh, Walter Levy joined us in the bottom of the seventh inning, we'd like to thank him. Well, what a great thrill. I mean, he got a triple, he got a home run. And I'll tell you one thing about Walter. He came prepared. <laughs> he had all kinds of stuff. And he knew he didn't have a lot of time to get it all in. He was going to make sure he got it all in. Run and gun. I'm a little upset with you, though. You've never offered the Telestrator to me in the two-plus years we've worked together. That was kind of... That's a big sponsor. I mean, it's a guest. Threw it out there like it was nothing. Hey, would you like to use my Telestrator? Well, never, ever had that happen to me. I wanted to see how fast he could draw something on there. <laughs> Well, he had a ball. He did. He had an absolute, and it, you could see his face drop when they were two quick outs because yeah. he wanted to keep going, you know. Well, he got him three runs. Well, Romero Mendoza back out there for his second inning of relief, dealing with Matheny, the catcher, is one for three. And this is on the ground to Todd Walker at second. The first out of the top of the eighth inning. Stay tuned after the game for W.B. Mason's Extra Innings, New England's Red Sox post-game show with extra highlights, extra interviews, and extra analysis hosted by Bob Rogers and a new lineup of studio analysts. After the last inning, the action is just beginning. And Derek Lowe is expected to be the guest after the ball game in studio tonight, taking your calls and talking to the boys. One out, Orlando Palmero standing in. Romero, one for three with an RBI, singled and scored in the fifth inning. And Woody Williams running out of gas in the seventh inning, giving up the three runs in the bottom of the seventh inning. He got upwards to 120 pitchers in that outing tonight. And Red Sox getting to him for three in the seventh, including the home run from Manny Ramirez. And kind of atoning for the error that he made out there in left field earlier in the game. There's a strike. Three and one. Ball four to Orlando Palmero. One out walk. Well, it's not too late to order your 2003 subscription to Red Sox Magazine, the official Red Sox Magazine. Receive all seven editions of this expanded magazine, including the spring training, April and May issues, while supplies last. For details and ordering information, please send an email to SoxPubs at RedSox.com. One out, one on. Here is Miguel Cairo. He's one for four. Had an infield hit back in the fifth inning. 
This may be a time where Larusa attempts a possible hit and run. You got the one out sinker ball pitcher on the mound and a guy that can handle a bat at the plate. Red Sox have action in the pen. Looks like Alan Embry is up in the Boston bullpen. Breaking ball in there for a strike. Of the third pitcher used tonight by the Red Sox. Byung Young Kim went five. Rudy Cienez went an inning and a third. Mendoza went two thirds of an inning last inning and back out here for the eighth. This is popped up around the bag at second. Nomar stepping onto the infield grass and off it again to make the catch route number two. Let's check in with Tom Karen. Tom. Don, thank you. Our Citizens Bank, not your typical fans. Father, son taking it in. Tom and Steve Silva. Tom, you were delivering newspapers back in 1946 when these teams met in the World Series. Yes, I was. And you do a lot of games in 67 as well, right? Yes, I did. When did you start taking your son, Steve, here? When I was uh, maybe 12, 13 years old. So today, Steve, you're trying to give it back, taking him to the ball. Game. Hey, President, I decided to uh, show up at the game with Dad, except he came through with the tickets. Yeah, what's the story here? You got the tickets for your Father's Day. I got the tickets for Father's Day. Why? The last time he got tickets, we sat in the field boxes right above the foul pole. There you go. Not your typical fans. Back to you guys. All right, Tom, thanks very much. A pitching change with two down in the inning. Alan Embry makes his way in. We're back after this. Seven to five Cardinals on top in this one. We're in the midst of the top of the eighth inning. And Ramiro Mendoza leaving after an inning in a third. He's still responsible for Palmero, who stands at first base, and he turns things over to the left-hander, Alan Embry. 22nd appearance for Embry. The record stands at three and one. He's worked 18 in a third innings, allowed 19 hits and 12 earned runs, 17 strikeouts. Last time Embry worked was also Sunday in Milwaukee an inning in that game had a couple of strikeouts and I recall had very good velocity in that game on Sunday huh. so he comes on here with two down and a runner at first base and Orlando Palmero who walked Held on by Kevin Millar, and he has to face J.D. Drew. Drew does not have a hit off Alan Embry. Check again. So Palmero back in plenty of time. He's checked on him twice. And waiting patiently at the plate is J.D. Drew. Home run for Drew in the fifth with his seventh home run of the year. And the strike to Drew. Well, Embry's velocity has been up lately. 94 miles per hour at that last offering. It fouled off the left side, and Embry's ahead 0-2. Well, the Red Sox and Cardinals opening up their first ever interleague series tonight. Since 1967. Red Sox had the early lead. It is now 7-5 St. Louis as they bat in the eighth. And the 0-2 car foul off the left side. Thirty four thousand nine hundred and thirty seven on hand here for the first game of the three game series. <laughs> Struck 
struck him out. So Adam Embry comes on to face one hitter and he strikes out J.D. Drew. On to the bottom of the eighth, 7-5 Cardinals. Well, Alan Embry did the job as he struck out J.D. Drew to end last inning. Here's Bill Miller to begin the inning for the Red Sox up against old friend Jeff Passero back out on the mound for inning number eight at the final out of last inning. Bill Miller is 0 for 3 tonight as he's grounded out three times. Miller now struggling lately, four for his last 25 over the last six plus games. And he takes the strike, one and one. It'll be Miller, Nixon, and Veritek scheduled to bat here in the innings. The Red Sox bat in the last of the eight. Looks like Miller shaved that little uh, goatee he had. Yes, he did. He'll be trying to change his luck after what was a tough series in Milwaukee. Four for his last 25, but still second in the American League coming into tonight's action. On the ground, and to his left goes Roland, picks it up, and throws Bill Miller out. He stayed with it, and retires Miller for the first out of the inning. Let's take a look at the game summary so far. J.D. Drew with his seventh, Albert Pujols his 17th, and Manny Ramirez with his 13th. The starter, Woody Williams, lasted six and two-thirds, giving him five runs, and Byung Yun Kim in his Fenway Park debut as a starter. Five innings, giving up four runs. He walked nobody and struck out two, giving up six hits over his five innings of work tonight. One down for Nixon. Did he go? They check a third. No, says Darrell Cousins. We'd like to thank Dunkin' Donuts for providing our broadcast crew with refreshments as always. Dunkin' Donuts, just the thing. Inside, Nixon hopping back out of the way. Passero, 40 years of age, from Springfield, Illinois. Nixon sends it down the first baseline outside of first and foul. Passero was last with the Red Sox in 2000, spending the entire year here in 2000. Was 8-8 eight eight with Boston. Here in 38 games. Made a total of 23 starts that season for the Red Sox. He got the Cubs after that, Don. He did for two seasons. And then last year was a member of the Cardinals and Cubs. Combined to go eight and six last year between the Cubs and the Cardinals. He was uh, saving games for the Cubs when he left Boston in 2001. He wrapped up for 12 saves as a member of the Chicago Cubs that season. Three one to Nixon. Inside ball four, he walks in. Well, now it's time for the Sam Adams good decision of the game. This is Walter Levy, who has uh, won a play-by-play -play announcer for the night. The pitch from Williams that's slapped out in the right field gate. That goes through back. It's been a thrill, and I want to say again, thank you, Boston Beer, Brewers of Sam Adams, Nesson, and the Boston Red Sox Baseball Club. Thank you, gentlemen. Very good. This report is brought to you by Sam Adams. Always a good decision. Well, a one-out walk given up by Jeff Facero spells the end of his night. St. Louis goes to the bullpen. We're back after this. Cardinals on top, 7-5. to five. Back at Fenway, Cardinals have this 7-5 lead in the bottom of the eighth. We remind you this copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Boston Red Sox may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. In addition, the accounts and description of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Boston Red Sox. 
Took on is Jeff Facero, responsible for Nixon, who's at first with one down here in the eighth, and he turns things over to Kiko Calero. Big, big strikeout numbers for Calero. 29 strikeouts in 24 and two-third innings. He's only allowed 18 hits, and opponents have hit only 207, making his 20th appearance here tonight at Fenway. An amazing thing about Calero. This is his first year in the major leagues. And a lot of times you see guys at double A spend a few years. He spent five seasons with Wichita and double A in the Royals organization. See some guys spend a good amount of time at triple A trying to get to the next level, but generally not that long at double A. Well, somebody didn't like him in the Royals organization, right. apparently. Guess not. Five seasons in Wichita. One out, one on. Veritek takes a strike, one and one. Veritek singled in the second, one for three tonight. Veritek kicks it high in the air to right field. J.D. Drew ducking back to the wall. That ball is gone! Two-run home run for Veritek. We're all tied at seven. Jason Veritek with the game-tying two-run home run is ninth of the year. The Red Sox have tied it up 7-7. Kiko Calero chased after facing Jason Veritek and Veritek only. And a new pitcher on, a left-hander, Jeff. I'm going to call him Jeff Klein. Here's Steve Klein. Steve Klein, awful tough on lefties. Red Sox have Damon and Walker do up. And uh, Klein has held lefties to a 138 batting average, making appearance number 27 out of the bullpen for the Cardinals. Johnny Damon to bat here with one down. The base is now empty thanks to that gentleman who just took it out of the yard. Red Sox very silent. Two through six, but in the seventh, Garcia Parra Ramirez and now Veritek with the home run. Damon grounds it towards Renteria at shortstop. Two down. with Cleveland at one point, if I'm not mistaken. I think you're right, Don. Let's have some American League time. Yes, he was with the Cleveland Indians first in 1997. With Montreal for four years, and now in his third season with the St. Louis Cardinals. Todd Walker. One for three tonight with a walk. Takes it off down the left field line. That ball will fall. A fair ball jumps up into the seats. The ground rule double for Todd Walker. He's in scoring position with two outs in the inning. Uh, two doubles for Todd Walker. He just really fought this fastball off. It was up and in. Chases it, makes contact, and loops it right down that uh, left field line and then bounces in the stands for a ground rule double. Tony La Russa back out to the mound. First base open. You've got Garcia Parra followed by Ramirez. Pick your poison here. Nobody warming in the bullpen for St. Louis, so this is strictly a strategic conversation between Tony La Russa and Steve Klein. Nomar hitting 360 this year against lefties. Ramirez, 338.
So Todd Walker instantly in the scoring position with his two-out double here in the bottom of the eighth inning. The Red Sox, like they have done all season long, have come from behind tonight. Tied it up 7-7 seven to seven in the last of the eighth and a chance to move ahead. How many times can they go to the well? Ball one to Garcia Parra. That ball was uh, way outside. You can see Matheny set up way off the plate, almost like they wanted to get Nomar, who's a first ball swinger, to chase a bad pitch. Way out there again. Yeah. Wow. He's 2 and 0. This is about as much as you can pitch around a guy, possibly. Might even be out of the catcher's box down there. 2 and 0. Same thing. Larusa warning Matheny he might be swinging on the 3 0 count. Going back out there again just in case. Not an intentional walk in the books, but uh, you might as well make it one. I think they're going to walk Manny, too. And put the go-ahead run just 90 feet away. They may do that. Yep, they're going to do it. Wow. Walk Ramirez. They tried to get Nomar to chase a bad pitch. He didn't help. Now they're going to walk Ramirez, and they'll take their chances with Ortiz or a pinch hitter. This is respect. Fourteenth intentional walk for Ramirez that ties him with Delgado for the top spot in the American League. We also kind of put Klein in a tough spot. He has to be very careful with the go-ahead run just 90 feet away and a lot of pressure on him now. As you walk, the base is loaded with the intentional free pass here, and they'll go after David Ortiz. Now, Ortiz will hit. He's got three hits tonight. He had a hit against a lefty last time up. Well, the Red Sox have been in this situation before. Five for nine. After Manny has been intentionally walked, as he has been here in the eighth. Walker just 90 feet away with the go-ahead run, tied at seven, last of the eighth. And David Ortiz has been red hot, and that includes his action tonight. Three for four. And he bats with a chance here to give the Red Sox the lead in the eighth. one and Klein gets it by him. 34,937 and they are standing at Fenway Park. The 0-1. Down and away. Good play by Matheny who had to duck to his left. Slide to his left. And it's 1-1. One and one. to Ortiz will miss two and one I'm trying to get Ortiz to chase that slider off the plate has not done it the last two pitches and the count now in his favor Walker at third Garcia Parra at second Manny Ramirez at first two down lines two one Ortiz thought about it and takes the strike over the outside corner as words for Mike DeMuro. This lefties, he's been very, very good and overall has been very good lately. The 2-2. Two -two. Ortiz breaks his bat, lifts it to right. Drew is waiting on it and makes the catch. So somehow Steve Klein gets out of the jam and we head to the ninth tide. Red Sox baseball in Nesson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. By your New England Ford dealers. And by the Bone and Joint Center, Caritas St. Elizabeth's.
Well, we head to the ninth. Red Sox grabbing two in the bottom of the eighth inning, tied at seven. And Brandon Lyon comes on to pitch the ninth. Picked up a win in his last outing Saturday in Milwaukee to run his record to two and two. 26th appearance for Lyon. He's got to face the heart of the St. Louis order, and it's a good one. Albert Pujols, Jim Edmonds, and Scott Rowland, the expected trio, here in the top of the ninth inning. And he's jumped ahead of Pujols 0-2. in one and two. Red Sox with his comeback to tie the score of the Yankees lead Houston five to three. That's in the eighth inning in New York. Back to Lyon. Pujols is out number one in the ninth. That is a very big out. Yeah, it looks like, too, he might have got away with one. He left that breaking ball out over the plate, and fortunately, Pujols right back to the mound for the 1-3. His location of the slide, and Veritek wanted away, but it kind of stayed out over the plate, and Pujols just right back to the mound. Jim Edmonds, who's one for four tonight, he reached on a two-base error last time up. He doubled in the fourth inning. By the way, that Yankee game now is a final. They have won that five to three over Houston. In the air to left, hit pretty well. Back goes Ramirez. This will take him to the track, and he'll have to play it off the wall. And he plays the carom and quickly guns to second, but Jim Edmonds stands at second base with his second double of the night. He pulled something on the way also. So he's reaching for that hamstring in the back right leg. Now left field here, just kind of tailor-made for a guy like Edmonds. Has the power to use that to his advantage. Two doubles on the night for Edmonds. Really uppercut opposite field swing there. And plants it right on the top of the uh, scoreboard. Grab the back of that leg as he got there to second base, but he stays in the game at second with one away. And here is Scott Rowland, reached on an infield hit his last time up. side and it's 0-2. Originally a Philadelphia Phillies second round pick in 1993, still just 28 years of age. In 1997 was the unanimous selection for NL Rookie of the Year. He was the NL Rookie of the Year that year. Nomar on the other side in the American League. He has rolling. He'll take a ball. One and two. Veritek setting that high target, trying to get the rolling to chase a high fastball on the 0-2 count. is trouble down towards the corner Jim Edmonds will come around and score the go-ahead run Manny digs it out of the corner but it's an RBI double for Scott Rowland and the Cardinals take the lead eight to seven well you know they made the pitch they wanted to make you'll see Veritek set up inside they wanted that ball down and in sees so inside there's the pitch down and in and Rowland just cleans it out Line drive down to left field. Across comes uh, Edmonds, and he doesn't have to run very hard, so if his leg's bothering him, uh, that certainly won't affect him. Boy, this is uh, pretty much what we expected, isn't it? it? certainly is. Two good offensive teams. And they have not disappointed tonight in this first game of the three-game series. And he is still grabbing at that hamstring over there and yeah. get some attention. It's like a high hamstring. 
And your Renteria still with just one out. And another runner in scoring position for the Cardinals. First base open. Renteria has been one of the hottest hitters and having a big game tonight. Getting on deck. Eduardo Perez, who came on for Tino Martinez an inning ago. This will miss two and one action in the Cardinals bullpen. Would that be Jason Isringhausen? May we see him for the first time this season as he was activated uh, just before the ball game. The closer for the Cardinals who have been out with surgery in spring training, but uh, looks as if he might be up. This is chopped foul. Nope, it's Cal Eldred, who also has been closing games while in his absence. Yeah, seven saves uh, for Eldred in nine opportunities. I would think that coming off the DL, this might be a rough one to put you in right yeah. at the bat. So Eldred up in the bullpen. Rolling with his walking lead off second. The 2-2. Two -two. Got him. Good pitch. We're up top to get Renteria. And there's the second out of the inning. First strikeout for Brandon Lyon. Well, that's the second time they've struck uh, Renteria out. And uh, coming into the game, only 15. Fastball. Challenge time from Lyon. So here is Perez to bat for the first time tonight. As he came on defensively for Tino Martinez. Martinez leaving the game with right hamstring strain and is listed as day to day. Eduardo Perez, 33 years of age. Now both teams battling hard in this game. The Red Sox fall way behind. They come back, tie the score, deflates the other club, but yet the Cardinals come right back, get a run to go back on top. Three and zero oh now to Perez. Seen time in the big leagues with the California Angels, the Cincinnati Reds. And the St. Louis Cardinals first year in the big leagues was 1993. He's the son of Tony Perez. That's in there for a strike. Three and one. Came the fifth son of the Cincinnati Big Red Machine to be drafted in the first round. Brian McRae, Lee May Jr., Ken Griffey Jr., and Ed Sprague. On the ground and through into left field. Coming around trying to score is Roland. A good throw from left. Roland is safe. Able to get in with an insurance run for the Cardinals. Up to second base on the throw goes Perez. Well, St. Louis on top now by two, nine to seven. Al Perez, who comes in the game for an injured Tino Martinez, picks up a big, big hit. Give a, one, another run of insurance for the Cardinals. 3-1 count, ground ball. Now Manny gets the ball just about the time. Roland touches third base. The throws a little bit up the first base side, and Roland gets in with the hand. He has that opening to the outside, slides around the foot of Veritek, and gets home plate with his left hand. Well, Mike Matheny, the catcher, looking ahead to the bottom of the ninth inning. Red Sox expecting Kevin Millar, Bill Miller, and Trot Nixon. Boy, this is quiet in the Fenway crowd. It certainly has. Two and zero now to Matheny. 
A little move by Tony La Russa in the bottom of the eighth inning to walk Omar Garcia Parra semi-intentionally and then to intentionally walk Manny Ramirez to face David Ortiz and he gets out of the jam and now on the other side his offense has come back with two three runs no two runs here in the ninth inning a yeah, gutsy call by Tony to you know load the bases really has the confidence that his pitch is going to be able to throw strikes Klein did and got the out. Scoreboard on the left has three runs up there for the Cardinals, making it worse than it really is. Nine to seven. I got two on my scorecard. I have two also. <laughs> they have a three up there in the ninth. The two one is fouled off right around the plate. Two and two. Doubles in the inning for Jim Edmonds and Scott Rowland. RBI single for Eduardo Perez. You got the second on the throw. Got him. But the damage has been done. The Cardinals come up with two runs in the ninth. And it's 9 to 7, St. Louis. Back at Fenway, 9 to 7, the Cardinals on top as we head to the bottom of the ninth inning in St. Louis with a couple of changes. Kerry Robinson goes into center field for Jim Edmonds, who left with apparent hamstring problems. The second Cardinal will leave tonight with the same thing. And uh, Robinson into the game in center, and the new pitcher is Cal Eldred. Quite a story. Eldred uh, missed all of last season with an elbow injury and uh, has really been put in the role of closer because Isringhausen was on the disabled list, and he's seven for nine in closing opportunities. 23 strikeouts in 25 innings. This is his 22nd appearance of the season. Been in the big leagues with Milwaukee the most as he spent uh, nine seasons with the Milwaukee Brewers. He most of the Chicago White Sox. Yeah, most of those are the starting pitcher, too. Mm -hmm. A lot of starts over the course of his career, but now going from being a starter into the bullpen and trying to close out the game for the Cardinals. Kevin Millar 0 for 4 tonight. Lines it to left. Is it a fair ball? No. Just missing down that left field line. Lamar broke his bat on that one, so I have to go get a new one. Millar, Bill Miller, and Jason Veritek. Actually, Millar, Miller, and Nixon scheduled a bat in the inning. Anybody gets on, Jason Veritek. We'll get a chance. 27 hits in this game. 14 by St. Louis, 13 by the Red Sox. Millar sends it towards right center field. J.D. Drew moves over and takes care of out number one in the ninth. Third baseman. down and it brings up Bill Miller who's 0 for 4. Well the Red Sox in Milwaukee on Sunday playing a game that was just over two hours. In National League Baseball you bring this team to American League Park makes in the DH and two offensive teams and you're in the three and a half hour range right now. Al Eldred listed at six foot four, two hundred and forty pounds from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. He's now thirty-five years of age. A one and two now to Bill Miller. We mentioned sat out the entire season last year, continuing to rehab his injured right elbow. Last pitched in 2001 with the White Sox. It was just 0-1 before going on the DL of that elbow. And on the ground and threw into right field. Well, the Red Sox needed a base runner, and they have one in Bill Miller. Miller four for his last 26. But keeps this inning going here in the ninth. Looked like a slider that time. Inside. 
And right by Eduardo Perez at first base. So the Red Sox have the potential tying run coming to the plate here and Trot Nixon, who's one for three with a walk. Remember, it was his home run on Saturday that tied the game at 10 in the ninth inning in Milwaukee. Nixon sends the first one foul. Red Sox has started this game today third in home runs behind Texas, and then the Yankees are second. The 0 1. Hard stuff inside to Nixon. Well, St. Louis has used five pitchers in the game. Cal Eldred. And uh, close it out here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Nixon pops it up down the third baseline. Rolling moving over, but it's back and out of play. Rolling running all the way over to where the photographer's well is beyond the Cardinals' dugout. Well, the Red Sox coming into tonight's action 18 and 9 at home. And after taking two out of three from the Pirates and the Brewers on the road, Red Sox welcoming the Cardinals here to Fenway Park tonight. The one-two. Evens up at two and two. And fooled on that pitch. Strikes out for out number two. The catcher, number 33, Jason Veritek. Looked like a fastball that was down and out of the strike zone. Nixon with kind of a half hearted swing at that. Knew when he started that swing, he was going after a bad pitch. So the Red Sox down to their last out. Two down here in the ninth inning. Miller standing at first. Veritek with a home run his last time up in the eighth. And swinging for the downs with the first cut. Cardinals do lead the league in blown saves. That's a large number. Strike two to Veritek, and the Red Sox are down to their last strike. Veritek strikes out, and the Cardinals have taken game one. Of this three game series at Fenway Park a tough loss tonight for the Red Sox as they came all the way back to tie the game at seven but St. Louis comes up with two in the ninth and they hold on to win nine to seven. The Foxwoods chance play of the game the base hit by Scott Rowland this coming uh, in the ninth inning to once again give the Cardinals the lead in this game they added one more for insurance that is the Foxwoods chance play of the game. Well, these two teams have not faced each other since 1967. They have tonight, and the Cardinals have won 9-7. to seven. Steve Klein is the winner. He's 3-4. and four. Brandon Lyon takes the loss. He is 2-3. And, and the save, number 8, for Cal Eldred. Again, the final 9-7 to seven, St. Louis. For Jerry Remy, this is Don Orsillo saying so long from Fenway. Now it's time for W.B. Mason's extra innings with Bob Rogers and Dennis Eckersley. Donnie, thanks very much. You know, this is a tough one to talk about because it's such a strange ball game. The Red Sox uh, showing their resiliency once again, coming back only to watch the Cardinals uh, give us heartache again. I mean, you never want to lose, but I mean, it was a nice comeback. I mean, you thought this game was was done when the score was seven to two. You thought the game was out of hand. They come back and tie it up seven seven. So it's. It's not an easy way to lose, but they had made a gallant effort. All right, we'll break it all down. We'll have Derek Lowe as our guest in studio. W.B. Mason's extra innings is next.